right, welcome to Sheep Farm, and this is a brief intro into a conversation we had with Jerry Mazinski's co-writer of his book, Sherry, Sherry Sweeney. I got her name wrong in the intro of the, as you'll hear, and I got a bit of a bollocking. Um, but it was a real interesting conversation with Sherry, weren't it, Chris? Yeah, yeah, lovely. We've wanted to speak to her for a while, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Very knowledgeable um, and really... Um, forthright as well you know she, she, she knows the stuff it was like talking to Alana Freeland that's mm. what it reminded me of mm. so yeah we hope you enjoy it and uh, that's it really but, but. <laughs> hi there and welcome to Sheep Farm and we've got a special guest in tonight um, all the way from the States and it's Jerry Mazinski's co-author of, of, his, of their book uh, Sherry Sweet, Swiney have I got the name right there Sherry? Sweeney Sweeney, I thought so. Yeah. Do you know, Jerry always says that, and, and I say it's Sweeney, and he says, no, it's Swiney. And I went, no, oh. it isn't. No, yeah. it's Sweeney. Yeah. And he says, you've got I to apologize. get it right, otherwise she'll be really angry with him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a bit, he's a bit scared of you, Sherry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's scared of technology. I yell at him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> he's, he's certainly scared of technology. Uh, yeah, he's very, he's very scared of technology. <laughs> I yell at him a lot. <laughs> I yell at him a lot. Fantastic. He's getting better at it, though, you know. Yeah. And your book, uh, An Amazing Journey into the Psychotic Mind, Breaking the Spell of the Ivory Tower. Um, mm -hmm. It was a fantastic read. I've got to say, when I first heard Jerry and I heard your story, um, going back oh, a few years now, it, and I'm sure you've heard this before, it really resonated with me and freaked me out at the same time because I had my own internal voice type experiences from Lyme disease which can call, create um, intrusive voices let's just say mm -hmm. um, probably not as, as intense as yours but certainly um, there were certain voices in there telling you to do stuff and whatnot that you didn't really want and it's only since I got better that I realized how bad it actually was yeah yeah, that's uh, that's the same thing. So, uh, Christian, have you had the same kind of uh, in, intrusive thoughts or? No, not really. Um, it was interesting because um, <clears throat> I re literally remember the day because Don was telling me about this, and he was saying he had these. Uh, you know, he basically described how he managed to sit outside and stop the voices from chattering. And he said, you know, when, but he was saying it like a matter of fact, you know, when you can stop them. And I'm like, I don't really get that, Dom. And but he was he was thinking that everyone had it. And I'm like, no, uh, no, really don't, uh, didn't, didn't, didn't really happen to me. And he's put it into, because he had Lyme disease, uh, maybe uh -huh. it's something to do with the parasites. Yeah. Um, because he said they were like screaming at him. Yeah. And it, it's, we, we, we know it's me and my wife have Lyme disease. And we noticed when we got rid of the, the biological parasites, the metaphysical parasites went quieter, which was uh, interesting. So the detoxification, um, yeah, uh, helped. So it might have massively. been a different. Could be a different kind. Uh, could be different entities, but there were certain entity. certainly a lot yeah, of parallels there. Yeah, a lot of parallels. Yeah, it, it very well could be. Um, uh, so the the voices that I heard. They weren't, they weren't audible voices. They're not the kind of schizophrenics here, but they were internal in, uh, thought intrusions. That, and they yeah. were heavy duty. They were very heavy duty mm. thought intrusions. I just couldn't get rid of them. I didn't know how to, at the time, I didn't know how to get rid of them. And this goes back, I don't know, a long, long time ago. And uh, so when I was, um, I don't know where to start, but... Uh, <laughs> I remember sitting sitting in my chair when I was going through my own uh, kind of recovery and trying to figure out what was going on. I remember sitting in my in my chair and nothing was going on in my life. No, no problems, no nothing was going on. Nothing was uh, was bothering me. And I and I watched the the thoughts pound into my head. You know, I just I just observed them. And so I was thinking, okay, so nothing has changed and my world just fell apart. What is going on here? You know, so it was like, if, if a person can do that, and I don't know if anybody, if everybody can, I think, I think most people can if they put their mind to it. But uh, yeah, so I did that and I, it took a long time. And finally, 
finally it calmed down and finally it went away. But <clears throat> I, I, I realized, okay, so these are not my thoughts at all. Mm. So when they would come, when they would come in and I was like, this was during my therapy, my personal therapy to myself. Because I didn't want to go to a psychiatrist. I knew that that was a bad, a bad, a bad mistake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be, you know, that would be putting me on drugs and, you know, psychotic drugs and stuff like that. Or they, you know, I have no idea how I would have reacted. But, yeah, so I think I, I, I imagined that, you know, they'd drug me up and throw me away and I'd be done. My life would be over. So I didn't want to do that. So I... Um, I was working at the time, and uh, and so and I was my engine my my background is engineering, so I was working for an engineering firm, and uh, I'm retired now. I've been retired since 2012. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Well, okay. So I was working. I was I was working at the time, and my I had been thinking you know, what is this, you know, how do I, how do I get rid of these things? I don't know how to do this. And then I, I had thought about it and thought about it. And I, I spent lots of time in the library looking at books and reading all kinds of literature and trying to figure out what was going on with the brain and learning all about the brain. And it was, it was interesting, but it didn't help me any. And so it was, because that was all physical material stuff. And, uh, and so then um, I came to work one day just because I had this in my mind so much. The universe just responded to me. And then I, so I walked into work and my boss called me in the office. He says, you know, we just got a contract to write a computer program <clears throat> for a water district. And would you like to learn how to do computer programming? I said, oh, yeah, that, sound, that sounds interesting. So I went to computer programming class and that's where I learned the hay, it clicked, the brain kind of works like a computer. And so I got to thinking, well, I wonder if I could reprogram my own brain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was my theory. So then, uh, so then I thought, well, okay, so let me just think about this and how would I do that? Because the brain is so complicated. And I, I figured, okay, so this is too much. I need to have something really, really simple, something I can remember during an attack. And then I started thinking about all the stuff I had read in the past and all the experiences I had had in the past that proved to me that I was being lied to all the time. And about everything. I mean, about everything. So... <laughs> You know, so everything was a lie. And so I thought, okay, so now if I just recognize that what I'm hearing is not true, it's just a lie. And I call it out as, as that. And then I start using that uh, part of my brain to, you know, to say, okay, so that's a lie. And then stick with that. And don't use the other part of my brain that was already being used by these intrusive thoughts maybe that part of my brain would atrophy and then I wouldn't be able to use it anymore. That was, yeah. that was the theory. Well, it worked because, uh, you know, I, I tried really hard. I worked at it every single day, day and night, day and night, day and night. I never gave up. Uh, and so when they, when the voices would come back, the thoughts would come back and they come back really strong, mm. but I would just say, okay, so that's a lie. And it, I didn't always catch it right off the bat, but eventually I got to the point where, okay, I could finally catch it pretty quick. But that took many years hmm. to do that. So, so yeah, so I was, I was going through that. And finally I caught on and uh, started in with, okay, so that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm not going for it. You're not going to hook me in. I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy into this. I'm not going to do this. And eventually they went away. So now I don't have that anymore. Once in a while, mm. there'll be something that every now and again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every now and again, something will pop in and I recognize it right off the bat and I can say, well, okay, so that's a lie. And then later on, 
as time went on and I evolved more and I learned more, I realized the power of love is really, really uh, strong. It's, it, it's the strongest uh, frequency in the universe, as far as I know. So I started saying, okay, so that's a lie, and I send you love. And they would just be gone. They'd be gone <laughs> yeah. instantly. Uh, instant, instantly. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so that, that was, um, you know, that, that was the way that I did that. And that's what I teach. But the, the, the background is, you know, the experience that I had that got me to that point was pretty bad. I mean, it was pretty mm. awful. You know, so as a kid, how, how long how long was it going on for, Sherry? Uh well, from childhood to right, about fifty right. years old. So. All right, right, all right. So about, I thought about, you... about fifty years, yeah. Blimey, and right. um, yeah. my life was totally messed up. You know, I I tried to tried to have a good family and tried to live a normal life, and that just didn't happen. It just wasn't possible. So, yeah. but yeah, as a kid. Um, I, I would I put this in the book and the book is uh, the book talks all about my experience and uh, in brief in brief yeah I do and, apologize I've read it like it was about two years ago so okay I need, I need okay. To so, it again. <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, it talks about my experience it, just in brief to give the reader an idea of what a person goes through sometimes and then Jerry's got some other patient uh, uh, profiles in there too yeah so you know so we kept mine as short as you know pretty much as other patients Mm -hmm. so but then i threw in my my own learning throughout the book what i had realized you know because he we've talked a lot he and i we've known each other about 30 years i guess and i think we had known each other about 10 years before i ever let him know that i knew all about the voices you know so that they were they were uh you know discarnate spirits they were entities that we can't see they're beyond our physical uh visual spectrum and so uh, but yeah as a kid um just for your audience to know um my dad was this was uh, just at the end of world war ii and so he was really enamored by uh world war ii uh, the Japanese torture methods and stuff like that. So he wanted to experiment on it. And so he did, and I was his subject. So, uh, you know, this started when I was like three. And so from three to six, you know, and then from six and a half, I went into this um, uh, juvenile detention center for six months as a waiting, it was like a waiting room to go to this orphanage, this Catholic orphanage. So I had, you know, it's just one thing after another that was, you know, uh, actually conditioning me and brainwashing me totally. So everything I was learning was a lie. Yeah. So that's what I grew up with. That's what I, I didn't know the difference. I thought that was just. It was normal. It was normal. Yeah, so I thought that was life, and that's how I managed my life. So I was like, oh, my gosh, what have I done? But, you know, I, could, I, I mean, I couldn't do anything about that except for make a correction from this point forward. Yeah. So that's what I did, and uh, and it was a real, real struggle. You know, it was a real struggle. Oh, so but- I have empathy for anybody who's trying to straighten out their life. It's not an easy task. You know, you have to be determined. You have to be, you know, really, really diligent and really want that. Do you so, think the yeah. um, Do you think the entities um, uh, arrived at you because of the lack of love, like you said, the most powerful thing from your dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you kind the, of wide the, open. Yeah, the thing is that he gave me mixed signals. First, I would be in the lab and, and go through his um, his uh, <laughs> his torture methods. And he was very clinical about it. He had this clipboard and he had his lab jacket on and the whole bit. He was really role playing. And uh, then when I was when the session was over with, um, he would put me on his lap and he would doctor me up and fix me up and stuff like that and then he would rock me to sleep and tell me what a good girl I was so you know then I would get lots and lots of love and I would be comfortable and I would fall asleep 
in his lap. So, you know, that's a mixed a mixed message for sure. Yeah. The message was, I guess first I have to get tortured and then I'll get loved, right? right. So that's right. kind of the way that I grew up. And, uh, you know, and then by the time I got to the orphanage, the nuns were pretty mean to all the girls. There was 500 girls in the school. And so they were, you've, you've read the stories of the Catholic orphanages mm -hmm. and how that was. So that was pretty bad. And uh, <clears throat> so I got out when I was 13 and went right back to my dad's house. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, but I okay, mean, it's not uh, your fault hey. because every kid wants to love the parents, don't they? Yeah, um, yeah, whether yeah. Whether they're abusive and, or not, you know. Well, it, that's true. And I loved my dad and I loved my mom. And, you know, they were both, <clears throat> they were both, um, pretty, uh, my mother was pretty, um, uh, I don't know what to call her, uh, but um, she was, she was very introverted, I guess. She was very self-centered and she wanted me to be like her and I wasn't like her and I wasn't like my dad. I was like me, but I, you know, I didn't know. Mm. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anything about, you know, me being me or anything like that. I just knew that I didn't want to be her and I didn't want to be him. So, you know, but still I was, so I had, a, I was a little bit of a rebellion, a rebellious kind of child to begin with. So, but I kept a lot of that inside because I couldn't, I couldn't voice my opinion. You, know, you obviously, you obviously had a lot of strong energy. Um, otherwise you wouldn't have been able to, survive now would you Five no, no to, i could have yeah, yeah. yeah i could have turned out to be a jeffrey dahmer for all i for all i know yeah you know i could have i mean it could i've thought about that and it's like holy cow i could have done that but i didn't because that wasn't that wasn't who well, I you, was. you, you must you must have had some positive energies on your side i mean yeah i had a lot of help uh, some spiritual help and i didn't realize it at the time but you know i know that i had a lot of spiritual help and uh, I mean, I had I was in in some kind of I was in uh, lots of situations where I could have been killed. And I didn't I you know, that didn't happen. So, you know, it's like all of a sudden I got saved, you know, I got lifted up and put over here and I got you know, moved around and, you know, just got out of the way at the lick of time and, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, <laughs> we've been doing a series on uh well, it's called. It's about the Huxley's. It's called Huxley's Brave New World Order uh, series. But the one thing that comes out of this series is that everything that how we live our lives has got an element of brainwashing in it. Um, yeah. It's one of the overriding factors throughout the whole research we've done. We've recorded about ten hours so far, and uh, it, it's quite amazing. Even from a, a, a micro level, say a family level, up to um, a town or a city. Everybody, and then a country, and then a, a continent. Everybody's uh, brainwashed yeah. to a point of, and you're just talking about popping a Jeffrey Dahmer out, or popping someone else out, a psycho who wants to run a massive corporation, or what have you. Mm -hmm. It's no wonder we're in this state. Yeah, for sure. And the 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 whole planet. I mean, I've come to the conclusion that the planet is has been invaded by the dark side, mm, and. Yeah. Uh, and so, but we don't know it a lot. Some of us do, and more of us are becoming aware of it. And so I think that um, until we all recognize that this is what's happening, we're not going to get out of this mess. Yeah. I mean, some yeah. of us will survive and we'll be okay, but the rest of the people on the planet uh, won't. Well, you know, they'll have to come and do it again, I guess. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I just, you know, I keep, I keep thinking, geez, if I could just let everybody know that we've been invaded. And I talk about that a lot, saying we have been invaded. You know, we don't know, we don't see it. People are, the government's telling us all about, oh, well, there's going to be this, you know, ET invasion. Well, we've already been invaded. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've already been invaded, yeah. I'm sure you've seen They Live, uh, Shara. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that is what it looks like. That's what it feels like. That is what it. Uh, the, the sort of lunacy that we're living through at this moment—that's absolutely nuts to us three and people listening. Uh, the average person, the NPC, the the sheep, or whatever you want to call it, 
without sounding derogatory, Christian always has a go at me for calling people sheep, but... Um, the, the, We're all sheep. The, all right, the, the people that aren't like us, for some reason, we've been able to tune into this frequency. I don't mean to say we're anything special, it just means, for some reason, we didn't ask for this, we haven't asked to be able to be tune, tune into it, for some reason, we can. Uh, well, right, we didn't... Uh, I don't know that we asked for it, but... You know, Not maybe, in this life, anyway. <laughs> well, maybe we did, but we don't remember it. Yeah. I don't know, but... Um, that I'm running into more and more people who are realizing, ah, you know, this this is not, this it's is not right. Not <laughs> what what I wanted. This is not what I signed up for. Except yeah. that maybe it is what we signed up for because uh, we we probably knew what we were doing when we got here, and then we forgot because it got brainwashed out of us. Mm-hmm. And now we're tra- now we're starting to remember. So. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a that's, good, that's, good example of it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And so, you know, we're trying, we're starting to remember. And that doesn't mean we remember everything. <laughs> it just means that yeah. we're, you know, okay, I get some of this. I, I, I hear some of this and I get some of that. So, you know, if, the, if you can remember, uh, you know, who you are, that's the first step. Mm. And then know that you're an immortal being. So, so there's no reason to fear anything. Mm. Right. And fear is that is that's the frequency that that everybody uh, uses to manipulate you. So so there's no reason to fear anything, anything, not even death. No. Yeah. So, I mean, there's the way that the world is going right now and kind of this is off top. Well, maybe not. But (laughs) the way the world is going right now, I mean, there's there's worse things than dying. (laughs) I mean, yeah. I mean, I so want, yeah, I wouldn't want to be uh, going along with the, the crazy uh, rules that they're setting up for everybody. No way. No, I think that's how the things that's down how the pipe, the, isn't it? It's how the deaf cult run the show, though, isn't it? Just keeping everyone terrified. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. And and so when I look at people being terrified, I'm like, oh gosh, I wish I could just reach out to them and send them, you know, send them some frequencies or send them some, you know, vibes or something, so they would mm. not be afraid. Mm. The sad thing is they can't, um, they're not tuned into that frequency. Um, yeah. And it'll just bounce straight back off them. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. But the, the paras- parasites, I, the parasitic entities that I, or the, whatever we want to call them, this dark side, uh, whatever it is, is all around us. I mean, your story sounds very similar to mine, apart from the longe- the, lo- the length of time that you were struggling with that, and obviously your background, I didn't go through what you've, you went, you've gone through. Um, but what you said resonated with me by acknowledging the entities, or whatever you want to call it, the voice. Uh, they don't like that. They don't like the light. They don't like to be um, spoken to and acknowledged. Mm-mm. No, they don't. They, the, 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 their greatest fear is to be exposed. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so I've learned that they don't like being exposed and they will, um, you know, unless you expose them a lot, just, you know, without fear. A lot of people will will start to expose them and then they sense that there's a little bit of fear in there for doing that. And then they'll come and get you. Hmm. They'll get even with you. Can, so, can, can I ask you something? Should I just, I'll just, sure. uh, um, you know, like in, um, you know, you've got Hollywood films, The Exorcist, and I, I was thinking this the other day, you've got The Exorcist, that, when I knew this interview was coming up, the, this chat was coming up, sorry, the, you've got The Exorcist and all these films about possession, and what I think Hollywood have done there is, they've gone for the extreme, like, you know, head spinning round, throwing up mushy peas and all that, like, like yeah. The Exorcist <laughs> and other films we've seen, but the actual reality is a lot more subtle, so by putting out that extreme version of it, if anyone said they think that that could be them, you'd be ridiculed because um, the, we've seen the extreme version. We've seen the Hollywood mm. version. So the actual mm-hmm. reality version is a lot quieter and a lot more subtle that can happen to you or happen to Dom or to numerous people Jerry spoke about. So it's so so subtle and that extreme Hollywood version doesn't really exist. That It's just ignored and it's gone. Yeah, it's probably not. I mean, I would imagine it probably doesn't exist, but but that's enough to scare a lot of people. 
And if they don't have that kind of thing happening to them, maybe they don't think that they're really being attacked, but that's not true. That's, that's a lie. That, sorry, you explained <laughs> that better than I did what I was trying to say. So if you're getting it, you think, no, no, he won't be that because if I, if I was getting attacked, my head would be spinning around, I'd be throwing up much peas and levitating. But the reality yeah. is it's much more subtle. Do this, do that. You know, all negative, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they will. And they'll try it. They'll, they're, they're masters at... Um, at uh, uh, skewing perception, changing perception, hmm. so that you, what you're looking at is not what's really there. So, I mean, it's or it's not the way that that it is. They'll 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 uh, they'll manipulate it, and I then always, they'll let. Yeah. I always wondered why the Hollywood version existed. Is what I'm trying to say. And I once read somewhere that the when the Exorcist came out, the Catholic Church lo- loved it, but they would love it because it's still selling the Catholic Church, isn't it? Um, sure. You know, we can solve it with uh, this Catholic priest coming up and knocking that demon out of a uh, young girl or whatever. So they're still selling the Catholic Church, are they? Sorry. I yeah, well, there's there are exorcists and they do work. But yeah. the thing is, if the person, once they're clean, they have to walk, a pa- uh, they have to change their 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 path that they're walking or the, they'll just come back and they'll mm. come back uh, many fold. You know, they they really make your life totally miserable. So if a person wants to get rid of them for quick, they can do that with an exorcist and that'll work, but they have to change their ways. They can't, they can't keep, uh, you know, going to these uh, horror movies or reading horror books or uh, watching horror TV or, you know, paying attention to the news or whatever it is like they need to have some sort of a spiritual path. Mm. And, uh, you know, they have to do that or they will get attacked again. So so before we uh, move on, I mean, we'll carry on these conversations, uh, but I want to talk about the book, uh, yeah. really, because um, although we talk to Jerry a lot, we don't really discuss the book. Because uh, yeah. obviously we know Jerry likes to talk and uh, we love it, listening to him. Uh, but we want to get into sort of into the book. There's some people in there that um, that before you guys sort of came along, going back a couple of hundred years even, they were talking about this type of um, activity, this parasitical activity. Mm-hmm. And and they were sort of ridiculed at that point as well, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Um, Emanuel Swedenborg was one of them. The only reason that he wasn't totally ridiculed was because his his background before he just shut down and, and decided to do this was he was a brilliant man. He was a he was an engineer and he was an ambassador to you know uh, the different countries and stuff like that. And um, and so he was. Uh, I think he was alive around three hundred years ago. Right. Yeah. So uh, he was very very important to a lot of people. And he was uh, he was a professor, and he just had this whole long list of accomplishments that he had done. Well, then all of a sudden he went he had this ex- this mystic experience, and he decided, okay, I'm going to check in, I'm going to investigate this and see what it's all about hmm. from a scientific mind. So he did that, and he ended up writing down all of his notes and all of his experiences and. <laughs> he kept good track of where he went and what he did and what he saw. And so now people are studying all of his writings. So, um, yeah, he talks about, he talks about all kinds of things, but one of the things that he talks about is the spirits that attack you. And there are good spirits and bad spirits and the thoughts he says that none of our thoughts are our own we get the positive and the negative thoughts and then we choose which one we want to take. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, because our, I mean, our thoughts, are, we're connected to consciousness, right? So the, the whole, the whole universe is consciousness. Well, we're, we're transceivers and receivers, aren't we? So it makes yeah, sense yeah. that we, right. Our brains are transceivers and receivers. And then, uh, according to what we have in our hearts and in our mind or what our, what our training is, then we'll decide what to, which way to go. So, so the, the that's a lie program has, have you ever seen the, the program? It's got the picture of the, it's got the back of the guy and then he's got the, 
the devil on one shoulder and the angel on that's, the other. That's shoulder. exactly what I was going to say, Sherry. It just gives you that that image of a demon and an angel on one shoulder and the other. It yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and you right, decide right. which direction to go yourself. Right, and if it and it says something like, um, if you if you think that your thoughts are your own, think again, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. I suppose in this messed up world, the angel would be telling you, you'd be thinking to take advice from the angel, when in reality, the inversion would be that both of them are probably um, the voices. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, well, yeah, okay. In some, some, in some uh, skeptical uh, scenarios, that might be the case, cause, yeah. because they, they're tricksters. They really are tricksters. But for the That's a Lie program, just the write-up of it, yeah. Uh, you know, then that was the, the perfect. Uh, you just opened your book, actually, yeah, and it's got Swedenberg in it. And he says, when spirits begin to speak with man, he must be aware, lest he believe them in anything. For they say almost anything. Things are fabricated by them and they lie. For if they were permitted to relate what heaven is and how things are in the heavens, they would tell so many lies and indeed with a solemn affirmation that man would be astonished. Absolutely. So just saying the liars, basically, constant. Yeah, they, they're they're liars. That's all. That's what they are. Is they are liars. They're born liars. They um, they that's how they thrive because they they feed off of your negative energy. That's. Do you, their... do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me. Do you know video games where you're controlling someone to do? For, there's a game called Grand Theft Auto where it's quite a violent game. I've never played it myself, but. <laughs> You go and steal a car, and you, but you've got a character, and you get him to go and steal a car, or hit someone on the head with a brick, or whatever. And it reminds me of that type of process where you've got a control, and that's what these entities are doing—just remote controlling people. Oh, sure, that that is what they're doing. And some people just—they don't know how to get out of it. You mm. know, it scares them half to death, and they just don't know what to do about it. So they, you know, they they believe the psychiatrists who say, well, you know, you have a brain imbalance, right, chemical chemical brain imbalance, which is the, the biggest lie of all. And, um, you know, so they don't think that there's anything that they can do about that situation, which is another big lie. They can. Mm. Anyway, so the back to the book, because uh, the, the book talks about what you can do, too. So, but the, the other character in this book is... Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Van Dusen. Van Dusen, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he talks about he was a psychiatrist who uh, Jerry met him before he passed on. Right. right. That was good, and they worked together for a while, and he, you know, they they really uh, got to know each other re really well. So Van Dusen was uh, he wrote a he wrote a book. And he taught. He one of the chapters in the book was about the the presence of other worlds in in uh, insanity or in madness. I think it was. So he talked about that he had read Swedenberg's work, and then uh, as he was working with his patients, <coughs> he decided he wanted to become friends with the entities. He wanted to understand them. Well, that didn't work. Because <laughs> it never does, but he didn't know that. But he yeah, had to yeah. approach. So it was an interesting approach, and uh, the what came out of it was he realized that okay, I can't, I can't make friends with these people, these these entities, but I do recognize that that's what they are. They are uh, parasites, and uh, they they act like some of them are like a uh they're they're intentionally destructive like a drunken uh bum in a in a bar or something like that and then he realized also that there's another uh there's a hierarchy in that realm and uh and then there's also what he called the um the higher power i think he called it and he talks about that and I took that to be like, okay, that's the higher power of these dark side entities. He didn't take it that way. Jerry and I talked about it. And, you know, Jerry and I kind of have a different point of view of, of that. So we put both point of views in the book. 
And to me, because I had the experience, that higher power one sounded like and felt like the boss, one of the bosses of the of the lower entities. It's like a telemarketing agency. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, 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 that's really, really uh, accurate. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> is that where telemarketing agencies came from? Fat? Is it like be, yeah, the ultimate you, you, parasite? Can you imagine there's one in, um, yeah, like in whatever realm they're in, and it literally mirrors yeah. the one in some office. Yeah, like yeah, that. you can imagine it. Got yeah. a massive centre, right? Well, ring, know, ring, know, I, up, ring sherry up tomorrow. Well, yeah, they're yeah. on sticking out the top of the head. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, I re- I encountered one of those uh, what I called a captain one time. Right, um, right. And I wrote I think I wrote about this in the book, too. So we did a Reiki session and uh, we were working on the prisons because the prisons are the, you know, the uh, the what do you call it? The the epicenter uh, epicenter. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. The epicenter of the darkest, the darkness of it and the evil part and the, you know, the whole chaos thing. And so uh and that doesn't mean that there's uh, there's constant brawling, and st- although that that does happen, but it's not constant. But there's negative emotions everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Yeah. So these these dark side entities have a they have a buffet every day, every mm-hmm. night. So we wanted to. There was a group of us, like five of us, and we wanted to uh, see do an experiment and see if. Reiki would uh, would would help would help lessen the you know the uh, the frequency there change the frequency so we did that and sure enough we had people inside the prisons that we were writing to that uh, you know we did screening and stuff like that to make sure that these were honest as honest as could be <laughs> uh, people and uh, so. We told him, okay, we're going to do this experiment and we're going to pick your prison on such and such a day. So we want you to not do anything but observe and, and report back to us what you see. So every one of them did this. And so we, had a, we, had, we were making some difference. So we had like five prisons and we thought, okay, so we'll do one here and then one here. We'll do this. We'll just go around in a circle over and over again until something changes. And it was it was starting to work. We were starting to have some successes. I mean, the fights were, were lessening down. The guards were getting more polite. You know, it was just things like that was, was happening and nobody could figure out why. And we knew why, you know, so, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> So um, <laughs> um, anyway, this one night we were gathered. These are these are people that were scattered all around the, the world. <clears throat> so we connected on our computer, and um, I had the the candles lit in my living room, and the the lights were down. <clears throat> so then I had this nice ambiance going on, and and so we did this Reiki session, and then all of a sudden. There was this uh, this um, gray like smoke thing that was going. It was kind of going around in my kitchen, and I knew I didn't have a fire. I didn't have anything going, and I thought, okay, so what is this? And uh, you know, I kind of got a little nervous, and I kind of got a little scared because you yeah. know, I mean, I was a little freaked out. Like, okay, what in the world is this? And so I was sitting on the floor, and I backed up to the couch. And I was sitting there like, okay, what do I do? You know, I mean, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I, I couldn't get up and run because, you know, I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't know how, I mean, it was nighttime. And uh, so anyway, so here comes this thing and it's going around in a kind of a, uh, a tornado type of motion, kind of slow like this. And it was dark, 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 darker than the darkness of the room. But it was like smoke, and uh, it just started coming toward me. And I thought, "Oh no, what do I do? What do I do?" You know, it's like, "Holy cow!" You know, so, so what? What? What is this, right? And then the computer went off, the phones went off, or the phone went off, and the candles were still lit, 
but there was there was like no electricity in the apartment so i was getting pretty well freaked out and i'm like okay so oh wait a minute wait a minute i know i know what this is i mean i know what this is right so i'm like okay so that's a lie. <laughs> You're not in charge. I'm in charge. I'm the powerful one. You're not, you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the, the mental thought that came rushing through, came booming through my head was like, those prisons are mine. Wow. And I thought, oh. A warning. I am warning. stepping on your turf. Yeah. And uh, and and they didn't imagine like the it. negative energy in a prison. Well, yeah. I was just I was yeah. thinking when you were on about that, Chase, even the guards are part of it, aren't they? Probably yes. as much a part of it as the prisoners. For some reason, yeah. they've been attracted to that job. I mean, I wouldn't dream of doing that job, but I just can't imagine yeah. it. But no, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't um, either at all. But they're as attracted to that place as the prisoners are, I suppose, in a way, mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. some weird reason. Hundred percent. Yeah, and and I don't think that their uh, I don't think that their reasons are all altruistic. I really don't. No, you know, no. Not, probably start, uh, probably what, started out that way. Probably started them. out that way. Yeah, but they probably do, and then they yeah. get involved with everybody else who's there, who's already been infected a- and attached. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're already been attached, and so you know they don't they don't uh, they don't fight it off. They don't resist. It's like it's, it's like having a. I mean, I work as a chef. It's like having an office job or a job in a in a restaurant, for instance. It only takes one. If it's a boss, especially, you know, and they say shit rolls downhill if you like. But if you've got one negative entity there, they can totally, you know, it doesn't even have to be. It can be anybody. It only takes one negative one negative entity in a room to just totally fill that room and destroy any positivity yeah. that's in it. And it works a lot quicker than positivity does as well. I've noticed. Yeah, you have to be you have to be active in your positivity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the in a in a situation like that, you really have to be active, and not everybody can do that. Especially yeah. if that negativity is passive aggressive. So there's a smile on the face yeah. while they're slowly yeah. garroting you from behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. And you don't catch on that. Okay, so that's what's happening, and then you're in it, mm. and then you're like, okay, now what do I do? I mean, how do I how do I turn this around? How do I you know, and good luck doing that. I mean, you know, I've been able to do it a couple of times, but, uh, you know, I mean, I did that when I was at work and, uh, you know, people would like, you know, kind of go, Oh, wow. You know, so then I did this class of showing people, okay, so here's how you change your energy. If you're feeling kind of funky or you're feeling like you're getting upset or, you know, you're getting angry for, for no reason. You know, you can you can stand up and you can just woof, put your hands down like that, and that'll actually change the energy around your body. And uh, so I I put on a class for that, and during lunchtime, and everybody was like, "Oh, that's so good!" You know, let let's go do this. So then everybody started doing that, and it it, it made a big difference. But that was at work where I had a captive audience. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I mean, I was I was one of the one of the uh, the managers, so I kind of commanded the. <laughs> did you Did you get any? Because uh, generally, people who are trying to help people, and you probably find this, generally get attacked um, a lot yeah. more. Not necessarily physically, but um, certainly emotionally, or um, uh, yeah, or mentally. Uh, did you Would you get that at work when you were trying to do things like that? Uh, well, no, because I was probably because I was one of the managers, right. but because, because the effects were good and the people who were working there were good people, you know, they were good people to start with. Yeah. Right. They weren't, uh, you know, they weren't like really nasty people that I was yeah. trying to turn but, around. That wasn't that, going. But that explains what I was saying that, Sherry, if you were a different person, they probably wouldn't have been because you were managing them. If you'd have been that negative force. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I know that. And, you know, I mean, I I was with a, a woman at a company who um, I was a manager there, too. And then they put her in as a manager, kind of a supervisor position, hmm. as a, a, a trial position. And she let it go to her head. And yeah. I watched that. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. And I called her aside <laughs> I, after a couple of days, you know, because yeah. I was getting complaints. And so I called her aside one day and I said, you know what? 
you need to get rid of this ego part of you that is yeah. making you feel the way that you feel about having to about being able to tell these people how to do stuff or what to do because your job is not to tell them how to do things they know how to do that they know how to do their job you just tell them what needs to be done and when it needs to be done that's all you need to do <laughs> jobs to nurture yeah. them not um punish them <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so I, I, and she, I, i've witnessed it i've witnessed it up and instantly uh -huh. as soon as someone gets a promotion boom <laughs> yeah. is, is yeah. there any is there anything in the book or not in the book that you that you've thought of afterwards you could put in or is that for book two <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, actually, Jerry's been telling me that I should write something about the love frequency that I use to uh, absolutely get rid of the mm. voices yeah. because it works like such a charm. And the first time I told him about that, he's like, I, I, I can't I can't I can't love these these things. They're they're awful. And I said, yeah, I know they are, but that's what works. That's Jerry what wants works. to take them on with a shotgun. Yeah, he does. He, does. He, does he really does. And so, and I and I get that. But now he he's kind of understanding because a lot of other people have said that. Yeah. So a lot of other people have, you know, because he he doesn't want to listen to me. He only wants to, to show emotion. Once once I get the confirmation from other people, then he's like, oh yeah, that's. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it strange, though, that without any violence or aggression or anger, I know when I were, I, what helped me was, like I say, acknowledging, just turning off and listening to the sound and acknowledging that it was there and it wasn't part of me, that was enough for him to turn off and leave. Mm -hmm. and, and over time, I built that strength up and they disappeared forever. And mm -hmm. that was... Where you're basically building a, a playground where they can't play. You, yeah. In, in effect. You you're know, not but, providing them any food. Yes. Yeah, that's a good you way know, of saying it. Yeah. They have a choice to starve or yeah. leave. Yeah. So they, they, never, they don't want to starve, so they leave. Is there a particular person, type of person that they pick on, or is it, because, uh, or is it, uh, have you noticed anything like that? Is there a particular pattern of the type of people that they, uh, attack i know it's obviously people that can tune into and uh, take over but they must be knocking on most people's door yeah i think they are and uh so it's a matter of um it's just like a call center and it? it's a numbers game <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah maybe, like maybe so but it's um it's a kind of uh it's definitely not a chemical imbalance anyway no it's not a chemical imbalance but what it what it is is if you're open to um, not loving yourself, that's one thing. If you're open to guilt, if you're open to uh, fear, if you're open to, um, you know, well, doing doing wrong things and knowing about it, that's that's a whole different thing. I should mention guilt because that's what mine played on. Mine played, cause I, I've got a guilt complex. That goes back to his dad, doesn't it, Chris, that uh, guilt mm. complex. But that that is uh, what they played on. You know, you're going to let your family down or you're going to let someone down or that, that was one type of thing that it was it was about which is quite interesting you picked up on that one really mm -hmm. yeah and the thing is a lot of people feel guilt and in different ways and uh what they'll do is they'll they can they can like read your memory or they can feel the, the frequency of your memory or they understand they know your memory somehow yeah and and what they'll do is they will they'll Keep go pulling bits out on something that you did yeah, a long yeah. time ago and you don't yeah. remember it and they'll yeah. just throw it right minor there. details that feel yeah, they'll, like they'll it, throw yeah. every single detail at you until it just mm. drives you crazy do, do, do you think that this influx of anxiety illnesses that have been created um because to me it's very similar isn't it very very sim anxiety is very similar to what these voices create Absolutely. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It is. It is an exact an anxiety anxiety. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so if if uh, if you're if you're anxious about something and you feel anxiety, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. If you're unsettled about something or you're not sure about something, that's another thing. And so yeah. all of it is the negative frequency, the negative frequency. That's what they're after. They're not yeah. after the actual feeling itself. Yeah, or the information. Yeah, they're after the frequency. They don't mm. care about the information. They couldn't care less about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, really, they really don't care about you. 
Yeah. They don't care about me. They don't care about anybody. They care about the frequency that is their food. And that's why when you see these leaders like Biden or Trump or in our place, the Johnson and people like that, they look like they've been possessed. These people, Trudeau, people like that, look like they've been, look like the guy from Star Wars. What's he called? The, the guy that was leading the dark side, Chris? The Emperor. The uh, Sith Lord. Star- yeah. Oh, 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 you're talking about the Darth Emperor. The, the, not Darth Vader, the Emperor. That, the, Sim- the Sith Lord, yeah. Sith Lord, yeah. He's all, he's all deteriorated. They, they, look, they look like they've aged instantly as soon as they take office. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I didn't. I watched the movie a long time ago when it first mm. came out, but I don't remember the details of it. But yeah, I remember, um, I remember the Darth Vader part. And he's, uh, he's basically saying they deteriorate, they get into office. Obama did it over where you guys they get into office, yeah. and then all of a sudden they go gray, they get bags under their eyes, they just start to yeah. deteriorate very quickly. That's um, right, that's right. Yeah. Isn't that isn't that something? I mean, we yeah. watched that, yeah. we watched yeah. that Obama. We watched Not that with Biden. Oh, and well, with Biden too. But we watched it with Obama, mm. for one thing. He he got old. Uh, mm. Well, all the presidents get old because of the you know we used to think well it's because of all the pressure they're under. It's That's not it's true. It's the negative energy that they just keep you know getting it gets siphoned off of them all the time. Me, me and Chris talk about it a lot. Something I've thought about is. The, the kid, there's a kids TV film called a TV film. It's a Pixar. Is it Pixar, Chris? Pixar yeah. film or anyway, it's a Monsters Inc. Um, and Mo- Monsters Inc. was a kid, a quite a famous kids cartoon where the monsters went into kids' bedrooms from another dimension, scared them, and when the kids screamed, they put their scream into a box that fear and took it back to their dimension and they used that as power to run their world. Wow. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's it, pretty it, accurate. It stands hairs on my hands, and it was a big film in its day. You're talking early 2000s when that was made. Well, they made a and, sequel, uh, the offer. They made a sequel, yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, and that's for children? That's Monsters, for children. Monsters, Inc., yes. Jerry, yeah. yeah. And the, the logo for it is a, a triangle with an eye in the middle. Yeah. That oh, the, I the, see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, it gets even fun. more uh, cryptic. But, yeah, so that's for children, uh, Sherry, that's planting that seed in their head. Um, that a, a friendly monster is going to come and scare you and drain you of energy. That's uh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, pretty sick, that's, yeah. <laughs> it is a bit sick, isn't it? When you think about it now, you look back and you think, "Wow, I can't believe I took my kids to watch that." And ironically, one of the voices in the film was Greta Thunberg's granddad. Really. Yeah, he worked for Disney. How mad is that? Anyway, oh goodness, isn't that so, yeah? It was it's a, yeah, it's a big, uh, it's a big circle, isn't it, of these pos- possessions? And, Van, du- uh, Van Dusen said, uh, just opening your book again, Shira. The most fundamental aspect of the voices is their attempt to destroy. They can cause anxiety or pain. They speak in man's own native tongue. They seek to destroy conscious and seem to be against every higher value. Mm-hmm. For, for instance, they interfere with the reading of religious practices. They suggest acts against the patient's conscience. Mm. And if refused, they threaten. Me, me, my wife and kids, we used to go on uh, cruises. I used to remember, um, we booked a cruise and first feeling, because it's not like a voice like you say, it's more of a feeling um, uh, that comes over you that turns into uh, an action or voice. Uh, your kid's going to crawl over edge at ship. So I had an anxiety all the way uh, up to going on there. Um, and that was just one of them. There, were, you know, there could have been 50 or 100 there, of these There things. is a positive level of that anxiety fire because that is a fact. But when it's ruining your day, then it's not. Is yes, it? exactly. Yeah, <laughs> That's a difference, um, isn't it? Yeah, and you're going back oh, over 10 years ago that, that, with that. Um, mm. But the, these are the types of things is what I'm trying to say. It's not necessarily you're going to turn into Jeffrey Dahmer like we were talking about earlier. Right, right. It's, the, it's the fact that they're causing you anxiety. And every time they cause you anxiety, you become weaker. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's that's a very true statement, and that's what they want. They want you to become weaker. They want you to be more susceptible to their suggestions and, you know, so they can, uh, they can really rake you over. There's a good book on Jerry's website called uh, Operators and Things. <laughs> right. It's written by a woman who is suffering from schizophrenia, and she writes down 
the whole uh, uh, experience that she went through. And it was way different than anything else that anybody else had gone through. But yeah, so these, these operators called us things because we're things to them and they're the operators. So that's the premise of that book. And so she, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, they, they can control these things. They do it by fishing. It's like they, they put a hook out, they reel it in, they try this and try that and see if they can hook you. And if they can hook you, then they got you. Mm. So, yeah, so that's, uh, that's an interesting take on that. And, uh, you know, so that kind of, that kind of, um, applies to, to everybody. That's how Mm. they, think you know they think that okay we're just things we're not important well all we are is food (laughs) yeah yeah we're not we're not we don't have any you know we don't have any importance to them at all 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 we are is food so when you listen to somebody like klaus schwab and yuval uh yuval harar's whatever yeah yuval harari yeah yuval harari they think that we're just um machines and we ha- we have no soul. That that's you know that's that whole idea is fantasy. Do you it's mean hard. Bill Gates don't love us? Oh yeah yeah yeah. I mean they they, they, they you know they just uh, you know that I've listened to Haral Havari. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know what? I, I, I don't oh, want to wow. say this. I had a dream about him last night. No, oh, Harari. Har- 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 Look yeah. at you, Chris. Look at you. I don't I don't really know that much about him. But you went my... in the shower, were you? <laughs> uh, okay, well so. If, what I had was a your weird dream? dream about him, yeah, and it's only because my son was reading one of his books, right? Um, and then I heard him mention, I heard I saw him on something. Um, mm. My son was reading one of his books, one of his early books, and it's about the evolution of man. And I was saying to my son, "You want to be careful of that guy because he's uh, World Economic Forum parasite, parasite dodger." But when he was describing the book, it didn't really sound like any of that. But then I was thinking, did he write that initial book or initial books to get people in, and then deliver their the actual they're the hooks aren't they the hook. the hooks. yeah because i think he's he's, he's he's talking about tribes and stuff you know the evolution of man and all that lot so i don't think it was particularly that he's not really uh, telling you anything though chris is he when he no, talks he's not, he's not, he's not really at that point anything new no yeah. but then but then when you get to his later stuff and he's dragging you into the world economic forum stuff mm. that was the hook like you said um i think yeah. that first book he did was even made into a comic book fight so it was I'm, aimed at I everybody mean, if, if anybody sums up a parasitical um Attachment, Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. They're, they're, every, everything about that says that's from another another world, but, 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 made it, from another entity. From um, what from what Sherry's been saying there, right? What it pops in my head as a as a as a, as a thing is, um, I know this sounds probably quite obvious, but when we say it's a spiritual war, these entities, you know, the good ones and the bad ones, firing all this information at us, are they watching us like? chess pieces and that that how we react like you said where the amplifier of their suggestion how we react is how the world what happens to the world it, itself you know whether it turns negative or positive and the spiritual battle is these entities that we can't see telling us or and suggesting what we should do but it is up to us what happens fundamentally if you know what i mean uh, right. Probably, probably However, explain that very wrong. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we are immortal beings, so that means yeah. we are spirit too. So we have spirit, and it's either, uh, you know, it's what we do with our spirit that matters. And, and we have the choice. We have the freedom of choice, which is the we fundamental the thing of human of beings, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, we do have right. the choice, but they're allowed yeah. to suggest what we should do. And yeah, that's. <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? Sorry, I don't explain things very well. Sometimes. Well, it's, 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 the, it's, the <laughs> it's the ultimate. Easy. It's the ultimate. How the how the system works. If you were going to invent a satanic abuser system, that is. This is the ultimate abuser, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, planet Earth or plain Earth, or the sphere of Earth, whatever you call it, I don't really care. <laughs> Is not a it's not an easy place to live. It's a beautiful place. It's got some grand potential, uh, and we can we can create whatever we want. But you know we're being prevented from from remembering that, so we don't we don't even know that we can do that. But, but, but yeah. also, like Don was saying about video games, 
if you choose to play a video game and maybe we choose to come here, you don't always want to choose the easy one, do you? You need a challenge. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need a challenge. That's true. You know, and yeah. well, 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 what a challenge did we pick, right? Otherwise, you don't learn anything, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right so i mean i i'm thinking that okay so if i picked a challenge if i was going to pick a challenge uh this would be uh, quite the challenge to pick i mean i didn't don't i don't remember doing it on purpose but yeah. maybe i did and i just don't remember it i have no idea maybe but it was a chosen for us I don't. I don't think it was chosen for us because that that doesn't sound right. It, it doesn't freedom sound of, like freedom we of have our free will. The human away, yeah. So I mean, if we're if we have a God given right or God given gift of free will, then uh, you know why why would we why would we uh, you know allow that to be chosen for us? I just don't think that that's that doesn't feel right to me. No, it goes either. with. Uh, what the what we call them voices, but what the entities are trying to do to us. That's why it doesn't feel right. And maybe they're just trying to trap us here. Our 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 spirit or soul or essence or whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. Maybe these voices are trying to like the whatever Klaus Schwab is. His essence is trapped here. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I I really when I look at his uh, his ideas, they're like pie in the sky to me. I mean, I, I've got this engineering background and I kind of know how things work. It doesn't mean I know everything, but I know a little bit about how things work. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, I mean, uh, and I'm thinking, I know how, how buildings are built. I know how structures are built. I know how streets and underground water pipes and all, all of that. I know how all that stuff works. I know how infrastructure works. And, and the way that they're doing it, uh, they're, they're not planning ahead. They're not giving anybody a chance to to uh you know uh, evolve into something else mm. and you know they're just going to pull the plug and then change it and they're and then wonder why it doesn't work designed well, to fail it's yeah. designed to fail yeah that's right so well that's because okay. the psychos and they can't actually see how a human would react properly maybe 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 i don't know but we didn't put that in our book but still i mean that's uh you know that's that's the way that things are heading if we continue to it's an interesting parallel, though, that uh, Sherry. That the and you know, with your engineering mind, you see things a little bit differently. Because me and yeah. Dom have talked about this. He's got a bit of a business mind. I'm a bit artifacta. Yeah. So you have these different versions of, you know, yeah. what you what you. But it certainly gets you to the same place, though. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. got yeah. three people. We've yeah. got three yeah. people here who think. I think from a, I look at things from a commercial point of view, not necessarily making money, but how you run a business type of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you run it that way? Like an engineer these people running this is yeah. definitely a different no, kind would, of way. You wouldn't run it that way. You wouldn't, you wouldn't run, run it that way. way. It no. just destroy everything. But like yeah. you were saying, Sherry, from an engineering point of view, is infrastructure, <laughs> get it all ready, progression, and all that lot. Where there's no uh, planning. There's no planning. No, no planning. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No. There's no planning at all. I mean, they're just okay. So we're just going to do this now. We're not going to plan. And if we if we did plan that, you know, that's I don't know. I don't see any uh, any evidence of any planning going on. Yeah. Uh, well, now, like when 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 um, one I always think of is when Schwab and the Pfizer guy, when you that video you showed me, Pfizer, where they're mm -hmm. talking and he's like, yeah, what we needed to do, what we should have done, we should have pushed harder with the uh, basically the propaganda and the, you know, making <laughs> people feel bad. And you're thinking that that is totally where it went wrong because you went too far with that, you know. Yeah, that's they right. Didn't, that's they didn't have exactly the human right. element involved there, did they? they didn't, no, they were just no there because they don't. Psychic. I guess they don't think of us as human. I guess they, yeah. you know, they don't think of. Oh, they, they don't. can't think like humans because. They're, they're I don't know. I mean, I I think that they uh, they don't consider the the spiritual aspect the, of us. The spirit of a human being, yeah. They're, they're, or, yeah. or maybe maybe we, <laughs> as in we few three five percent in the world aren't actually human maybe we're something else and that's why we're the odd ones out oh, yeah. possibly i'm not saying that's i, I, I mean, hadn't I'm not, thought about that yeah uh, because, <laughs> yeah yeah no but what, you, you understand where i'm coming from don't you where yeah. um maybe maybe there's different where different so, so the people in caught in the middle the masses if you like um in the headlights and you've got the parasite class so maybe all three of us are different entities. 
uh, that's, three groups. Uh, that's a possibility. I mean, I, I I'm open to to thinking yeah, about. Yeah, I'd yeah. I'd say maybe. I'm not saying that we are. Just more. No, no. I but, I get that. I understand that, and I'm open to thinking about that for sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because just because we're in this same uh, biological suit doesn't necessarily mean to say our essence is from the same places. Yeah. And, and our very essence is trying trying to help people. So maybe we're from a totally different place that. That's gives, yeah. That's that's a, a good possibility. I mean, there's a lot of us, but it's still a small percentage of us on the. Planet. Oh yeah, yeah, three to five percent, I reckon. That, that that's rough gauges. Uh, if, if not just about the people who haven't been jabbed, uh, it's people. That, if you look at people, you talk to them. How many people have really gone down and accepted that anything is possible? It's very few people. I mean, me, I'm, I'm fortunate to know Chris uh, and a couple of other people close to me that we've spoke for a long time. Uh, obviously, me and Chris are brothers, but um, but it's very rare you meet people like yourself or people like yourself out in the streets, isn't it? Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my my son is is one of them. Fantastic. And I have a friend who is uh, another one. Mm. And let me think. Uh, well. Uh, Jerry is is another one, and um, I, I oh uh, yeah I have another. Well, I have a couple of friends. They're not friend friends. They're just acquaintances. But yeah, so I mean, but close yeah. friends, family. That's what Still I handful. have. Still a handful, though, isn't it? It's a very small yeah. amount in in it's comparison to the people amount. we've known in his lives. Now, um, my neighbor, uh, they don't. You know they're not uh, they're not open to that kind of possibility. My neighbors don't talk to me. <laughs> okay, well my neighbors talk to me, and they're very nice. They're very, they're lovely people, but they don't they don't uh, they don't think like on the same level that we're thinking no. here. No. So I mean, because they're uh, I don't know how to explain them, but they're nice people. They're they're generous people, and you know stuff like that. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we know what you mean, Sarah. We know what you mean. But, but, but it, is, it is difficult because they are all genuine people. My neighbours are all lovely people. There's no nothing wrong with them. Salt of the earth people. This isn't, I suppose, anybody listening or us trying to think we're anything better than anybody else because that's certainly not what it is. Right. It's different. It's different. Uh, not necessarily better. Uh, in fact, in some ways, it's a poison chalice carrying this round with us. Um, uh, being able to see things that, uh, you know, you can, and, and what have you. And other people are just oblivious to it. Sometimes you think, I do think that sometimes, would I be better off just being oblivious? It would be easier. You can't if turn you this thing off now, can you? It would be easier <laughs> if you didn't think like we think. Um, you might live a little bit less longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, you might not live as long, but uh, you might, and you, you probably wouldn't learn anything, that's for sure. Yeah. This is, this is one thing I've yeah. realized and thought about over recent years, especially through the last three years of nonsense, is um, I, I, I was already down the rabbit hole if you like to say that but I've learned a lot over the last three years I feel like yeah. I have and I feel like I'm constantly mm -hmm. and uh, even more open to learning more and mm -hmm. I do speak to some people I just think uh, if you, uh, you've experienced nothing you've, it's like the last two or three years has been nothing it's just yes. been a, a vacuum where nothing happened yeah. Um, I mean, I, I learned I learned an awful lot in these I, last three years yeah, too, and exactly. I thought I already knew a lot, but yeah. I didn't. You know, I really realized about myself, that, oh, about I, my thought processes, about how things work, even about mm -hmm. how me and this knobhead get along. You know what I mean? A, a lot of different <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but you know, you know, you know what I mean. He's built, it's built, built me up. I feel like it's armored me a little bit. Um, without well, there's like been a, some kind of download, and this mm -hmm. probably comes from the opposite side of the the voices the parasitical voices mm -hmm. this is the angel that you were talking about earlier for mm -hmm. some reason we we've, we've been able to soak up this information and it not overload us yeah i think so too and uh, i know that when i'm looking at the news um, in the morning more and more i'm i'm not interested that, yeah. yeah i don't like I, the gossip. Sherry, I, I said that to him uh, dom just before we came on here i said i look at news now i used to look at it objectively and it was interesting at least and there was something that would grab me, but now it just looks like nonsense. It might yeah, as well be written in another another language. It's just gobbledygook. Yeah, it's a, there, a lot of it is repeat stuff. I'm looking for new stuff. 
Mm. You know, I'm looking yeah. for something that is uh, like, oh, okay, so that that other people need to know. <laughs> I need to send yeah. that around, you know, to wake up everybody and like, um, okay, so like the the new information that now they want to put the mRNA uh, shots into, you know, the cows and the chickens and stuff. <laughs> well, oh, 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 over, oh, oh, I don't know oh, if they're doing that over there where you are, but that's what they want to do here. Yeah, they do. Uh, and and they... I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. They're not going to do that. They might do that to the commercial. Uh, it's just crazy uh, talk, though, isn't it? It's like mad people talking. That's not even. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, they want to get us all um, mRNA'd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever that thing is, they want it through the entire uh, yeah. world populace, don't they? Yeah. We, we, I just saw an article before we came on, and it said they were going to give the the COVID jabs to vulnerable babies for the first time between six months and four years old. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you yeah. give your six-month-old that, you, you're as insane as they are, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and the thing is, there's plenty of uh, evidence, solid evidence, that that just doesn't that that's dangerous okay yeah. well i mean it, yeah dangerous at our age um and it's pointless as well by the way but uh, yeah six months to four year old child yeah uh, and but it's it's dangerous for everybody and including the children they don't even need it no but uh but even so they want to get all of us mrna <laughs> yeah. there, there, there is uh, i mean so the, the, this mRNA, the push has been so hard that it's quite obviously driven by something else. Um, not just, I'm, I'm, yeah, we talk about parasitic, parasitic entities, but for another reason. It's, it's so blatantly obvious. We knew this in 2020, what was coming. Mm-hmm. We talked about that there was going to be some new vaccine on the radar, not knowing which one it was. But we weren't, I mean, like you, we were never going to take it. We were never going to the crossroads to make a decision. Uh, no, no. And the thing is, I did. I don't want to become a Borg. You know, I just don't want to become a Borg. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be a Borg, guys. I'm not going to be a Borg. Okay? We, we he fought, fought all his life not to be a Borg. So we don't. Right, right. Don't <laughs> he, do, he, do, he does make you think that, that maybe that's what that thing is about, doesn't it? The, I, I think it is. I really do. The ones, mind. Don't, the ones who don't make it, uh, you know, they can just die and get buried yeah. and that'll reduce the population and mm. that'll make them happy. Mm. But the thing that they're doing with the uh, the so-called climate change and they, they don't even know they you know, I don't, I, I think they're, I think they're being purposely ignorant or purposely stupid. I don't really know for sure, but I mean, they're they're attacking life yeah. on Earth. Well, they will because they're a death cult and they want us all dead. Well, but, dead but or sick or... they're attacking themselves too. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so I mean, CO two, by the way, is not a is not a, a greenhouse gas. Okay, that yeah. that's 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 what we need to survive. survive. As human beings, yeah. yeah. I mean, how anybody can think that CO2 is dangerous to us. Oh, but it's is, a different kind of CO2. And, fact. It's a different kind oh, of Oh, sorry, it's a different kind of CO2. Even though yeah, the no, Earth special is ca- CO2, yeah. carbon based. It's sarcastic, by the way, Sherry. Yeah, sorry, that's, so that's English, sarcas- English sarcasm. That's English sarcasm, is that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, apologies for that. I didn't get that, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all right. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't get the English sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, Americans often don't, to be fair. My, we've got an American cousin. I say sarcastic things to him and he just look at me like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because I, I was going to say, well, maybe you're thinking of, uh, you know, um, uh, carbon monoxide. <laughs> No, 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 no. no. That will kill you. It's when, you, it's when you, you're saying it with a smirk on your face and you mean the yeah. opposite, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You've that's got a glint in your eye when you, yeah. That's okay. a delivery of sarcasm. Uh, okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah, Sorry. I got we, we, it. We, <laughs> We're we're coming up to an hour and a quarter, and I want to get in. Oh. Where can people get your brilliant book from? Yeah, can you share your screen or no? Or we'll yes. just be a pod, It'll be a podcast. Will this? Oh, we'll, is we'll, it on, we'll put it, it on the thumbnail, though, Chera. Yeah, we'll so put the, the, the links book, all the on the thumbnail <laughs> for the book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go to jerrymarzinski dot um, Click on the book uh, tab. And there's there's a the whole book, and you can there's the English version, the German version, the French version, and the Spanish version so far. There's an American version. <laughs> With no sarcasm, Amer- American version. I mean, Sorry. Sarcastic <laughs> version. You, you guys need to work on that. You guys need to do something about that. Maybe do the translation for that. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Cheap yeah. job. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's, but, that's where you can get it. It'll take take you right there. Yeah, it's av- I think it's available on Amazon as well, isn't it? I know you better go uh, to yeah, Jerry's. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to use Amazon, no. uh, you know, if possible. I mean, a lot of people do, and I don't yeah. care about that if they want to. But just but, for English people, um, Sherry, because I know you'd have to ship it from America. It'd be quite expensive, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I would, I mean, we, me and Chris read a lot of books, and I don't recommend books easily, but I recommend your book because... Mm. Um, one, I've experienced these things myself, and I know when we speak to Jerry, we've had, I think Jerry's been on five times now, um, and we're still not bored of him. Um, he won't run him on again. Um, he's, hopefully, he's not bored of us either. Um, no, he's not. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but every time people email in or comment on, on, the, on the show that we have, saying my uncle or my brother or my sister yeah. or me or whatever, I've been going through this type of thing or someone we my brother was in a um an institution drugged out the mind electrocuted etc etc there a lot of people understand and resonate with what we talk about and i remember i I remember one fact early on when um someone emailed us and said i think it was the first one we did with jerry and said someone that you know someone is just going through this they were just about to go on the psycho drugs and Mm -hmm. it stopped them i mean bloody hell you know it's powerful that's powerful That's it's powerful, great. but yeah. I think if you if you if you want some evidence based um, information, the book sums it up. Especially because it comes from two different places with Jerry and Sherry. Uh, Sherry can talk about her experience, her personal experiences, and Jerry can talk about his personal experience from a clinical point of view. And then you've together, got, it's quite powerful, isn't it? And you've got those two historic accounts as well. Yes, the Swedenberg. Yeah. What's his name? Swedenberg. Swedenberg and, and, Van, and Van Dusen. Dusen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I read it like a, a thriller. I thought it was to be fair. Sure. <laughs> like a thriller, you know, when it was building up and like the the, the mention of these old, older guys and stuff. I'm going to read it again because it was yeah. a couple of years ago when it, since I read it. But I mean, the guy, the, the, the Swedenberg, 300 years ago. It's a surprise, surprise he weren't burnt at stake. Um, well, I mean, he was probably acting so way out there, fire that they were just ignored. To be honest, he was probably just, yeah. you know. Oh no, he wasn't ignored. No. He wasn't ignored. Um, but he was. Um, he was. He was paid. People paid attention to him, right? But they didn't. Uh, they didn't burn him at the stake because he had the other <laughs> background, you know. So yeah. I guess that was yeah. one. But I probably because he was a man as well. And, and the, the pharmaceutical mafia didn't exist then, I suppose, to the extent no. that now. Yeah, so they were yeah, still op- so. open to options to an extent. Yeah, quite possibly. Okay, then we'll we will wrap it wrap it up there. If that's all right with Sherry, have you got anything else you want to add? Uh, no, just uh, go to our website, uh, jerrymarzinski dot com, and look around. I mean, there's all kinds of different tabs uh, to just check us out, see what's going on. Yeah, there's some good information on there. And, uh, stuff. and guys, email email yeah, addresses being, there as well. It's being updated all the time. Yeah. So I'm updating it uh, for Jerry and and myself. You guys and are out I'm, there, aren't you? You're doing. You, you, I mean, Jerry's he's, on, he's all over the shop, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He really is. I mean, yeah. he's on a proper mission. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah, he's on a good mission, and and the more people that that hear this stuff, the the better it is. Mm, you know. Yeah. So I mean, because we really want to wake up a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Let them know that this is actually happening. The stuff that they're seeing mm-hmm. is uh, is not real. I mean, the stuff that they're seeing is all uh, you know propaganda and illusion. That the, the news media con. is a giant con. It's yeah. a big giant con. Or as you keep saying, it's a lie. It's mm-hmm. a lie. It it is a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. And on that note, we will finish, and we'll thank everybody for tuning in. Go and buy Jerry and Sherry's book. Um, Available at jerrymarzinski.com. I'll put the links in uh, the description in the in the note, show notes. Uh, but yeah, see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Take it easy. Bye. Thank Bye. you guys. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, here we go again. We're back with another weekly Mint Sauce Chronicles. I hope you're all in good health. This will be released on Saturday. Day we today, Thursday, the eighth of March. Not March, April. Bloody hell, a month behind. Clocks have gone forward or backwards, and so have I gone forward or backwards. One step forward, twenty-five back. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for all your emails. Thanks for all your kind support. Uh, as always, the format of the shows is quite easy. We try and release a minimum of four shows a month. Uh, they'll all be released on Saturdays, so if you don't get an email notifying you or you don't see the reminder on YouTube or anywhere else, it doesn't matter because all the shows are released on Saturdays. And if you go to sheepfarm.co.uk, go straight to podcasts, you'll see them all there. As I say, the format's simple. Members get uh, the full podcast, which is about generally about two hours plus. Members get part one, or the first hour. And, and that's it. There's no real uh, trickery or involved in our bullshit traitor platform. <laughs> 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 and right on cue, the biggest traitor, the vest wearing traitor, is opening his bottle of witch piss. Yes. What is it tonight? Bottle of Chianti. Bottle of Chianti. Yeah. He's got a Anthony Hopkins type look on him, on him today as well. I mean, some fava beans with it. What do you mean? Anthony Hopkins type look. Didn't he, didn't he wash it down with a nice oh, yeah, bottle with of the Chianti? Fire, yeah, Chianti. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet he's were nicer than my cheap shit. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, I reckon when people hear that cork popping, I mean, I don't drink a lot of wine, but it does actually sound good when you when a bottle of wine pops. Uh, yeah, it does. I, I'll I'll give you I'll give you that um, yeah. with your uh, red wine stained vest on. <laughs> no, actually, I've got a vest on tonight. Rocking a shirt. Oh, oh yes, I have. Fucker. Oh, you have got a vest. Some bleeping shirt. Talking of vests, we're going to be launching the uh, merch store soon, aren't we? Well, we said that a while ago, but the, oh, in fact, this is a cheap farm. This is one of the samples. Yeah, no, that's what I just said. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's. Uh, I know we've been fanning yeah, around with it for ages. We're, we're, yeah. we're not. We're not the. Um, yeah. Busy guy well, with the logo that held us up, um, we're, we're doing a bit of a tweak on the logo, which I actually like better now. Um, mm. More of an oval shape, like the bat sign, yeah. which you'll like even more. Yeah. Which conjures up some uh, other characters for your drawings. Um, yeah, yeah, bat yeah, sheep or something like sheep, that. Super uh, sheep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some of them draw, drawings uh, of, the, of the new sheep. But yeah, the merch site, we'll start slowly. We'll just have some... Uh, T-shirts probably on there, and we'll get a couple of hoodies and stuff like that. Uh, got some cups designed up as well. I've got a couple of cups at home. Uh, yeah, they seem to they seem to work perfectly. I haven't spilt out on myself yet. There's no holes in them or not like that. I actually did that today. Actually, I put up one of the mugs. You put a mug up. But every everything we do other than this is it takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, and. Well, everything takes time, you know, even preparing for shows and things like that. It's not a moan. I really, I do enjoy doing it. It's a good outlet. Uh, we get some good comments, some good feedback. Uh, we meet some interesting people when we go out. The one thing I, I would say, I think it's penciled in for July the 3rd, I do believe. So I'm putting my stake in the ground now. I can't back out. Um, uh, uh, the New Horizons in St. Anne's, where I saw Mark Devlin, I'm penciled in to do a live Talk um, there, Chris. Oh my God! I know <laughs> you're coming. You're coming up as well, aren't you? I'll come up. I'm not saying that. You were, as if you're not going to talk. You? I'll talk. Talk to people. I don't think I'll be getting on any stages. I don't like uh, right. talking. Well, I'm not saying I sort of get off on it. Although I've got to say that when I first started thinking about doing something like this, you're talking 2016, something like that. I went particularly mm. well at times, so I, I didn't do it. But the first. Part for me, I'd done a lot of research, I'd written a lot of stuff down, um, and I was going to do a presentation and finding a place to do a presentation. That's what I was going to do. Yeah, um, I remember you talking about it. I was inspired by Richard uh, of Rich Planet. Um, he inspired me, to, inspired me to do, going and seeing him, inspired me to do something of my own. Um, we saw him so, twice, didn't we? I've seen him twice. I think we did, yeah. Him. And I hope he's well with all the shite he's having to put up with from BBC. Mm. Um, yeah, stay well, that. Richard. Stay strong. Um, I, read that, I read that article, yeah. These parasites uh, will will back off, uh, believe me. Mm. And, uh, yeah, he's, I don't know, someone really to, uh, from his research and stuff like that, I really 
I really look up to. Are you, anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just not going to get into that nonsense. That, do, you know, do you know what gets me with the, people call it the truth of community? Even that sounds a bit pathetic. Because um, I quite like being standoffish, being myself, doing the research and letting the research stand up for itself. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm not, it, it doesn't have to be some kind of, I'm not interested in being part of a movement or anything like that. Not or that. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm, I'm not, because I think that's the problem. You, you, you don't need people, you know, you need some, maybe somebody to give you inspiration. There's no wrong with that, but you can't hero worship people or. If I, um, I would consider myself very spiritual, right? Um, yeah. I don't know what bits of, the, of the Bibles and religious books are true, but I would always refuse to follow any kind of um, organized Mantra religion. or yeah. organised nonsense. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, Which is, are you telling me you don't like David Beckham? What? What do you mean? What's that? What, David Beckham? You don't look up to him. Oh, yeah, I always have I, thought you, I, th- yeah, yeah. I thought you were going for his hair. Yeah, I love him. <laughs> oh, on, a, on another note, right, um, no, I, I made um, uh, Hamilton uh, with glue on dreadlocks. Mm. I saw, uh, I mean, I like watching yachts, right? right. Not the, the motor yachts, not the sailing yachts. And there's one called Octopus. It's 107, it's 107 metres long. It was owned by Paul Allen, who owned Microsoft, who's brown bread now. Bill Gates is still alive, but he's brown bird. Apparently, it were all his idea, but anyway, there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but he had a massive super yacht, but uh, an explorer yacht called Octopus. If you look right. it up, it's absolutely amazing, right? Two helicopter landing pads and in, internal hangars and all, all sorts of stuff. But it used to go, um, you call it off grid, but it's not really off grid, but down, in, you know, down, down, uh, or down to the poles, let's say. Anyway, who do we see on Octopus? Glue on, glue, glue on dreadlocks. Right. Is he, what, is uh, he on it? No, Hamilton. No, no, he didn't own it, but he's on it. You know, other month when he was telling everybody that we shouldn't use plastic. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on a big eco-draining. <laughs> <laughs> plastic guzzling. Yeah. Wildlife screwing. <laughs> Machine. <laughs> Just baby seal chewing. chewing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on, he's literally on a James Bond buddy ship, basically. Yeah. And then, and then he went off the ship, right? On, um, on a rowing boat. On, into the snow, on, into, into a speedboat. And, yeah, yeah. Um, the hypocrisy. The, these people It's the hypocrisy, are, isn't it? Do what you want. Don't, don't tell everyone else what to do. Yeah, the levels of hypocrisy are nonsense. And still the NPCs just go along with it. Oh, Lewis Hamilton, great, and all this type of thing. No, he isn't. No, he's just on telly. Yeah, he isn't great at all. And then plastic bottles you saw there, a tipper truck came and tipped him onto the beach. And he turned up with them it stupid been, boots he wears. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, with them stupid boots he wears and then baggy trousers that are designed for him. Some yeah. nonsense he wears and all. Um, well, uh, well uh, look how much dust he earns and he's just a puppet being told what to do. Put yeah. them trousers on. You'd, you'd like to think if you were that famous and powerful it'd buy you a bit of freedom where you can wear what you want. No, he glues his hair on and wears shite. That's the reason you don't like it, because he glues his hair on. <laughs> <laughs> All your venom comes from the fact he's got those beautiful looking fake dreadlocks. Do, 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 you know, do you know what it is, right? You were quite obviously going bald, right? Yeah. I'm no problem. Uh, obviously, I'm bald. No problem. I'm right? going bald. Look at that. I'm, it's the matter of fakery mm. that he now wants people to believe that he wasn't bald. Yeah. Instead, you're better off just saying Which I wasn't going up. bald, so I, I sorted it out. I put a bit of cash into I me. put a wig on. Follow, follow call airline. Yeah, I put a wig on, or I had some. I've had I've had, had the same Je- Black Nicholson receding airline for about ten years. It just didn't change. Yeah. You're a brown rear Reardon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's but but yeah, like Wayne, Wayne Rooney, it looks like he's got a shredded wheat on his head. Mm. That was a bad job, that one. It? It's not a good one. That it's not a good look. Not a good look. That. Mm. Um, no, uh, cool. like, that's like Ted Danson's, isn't it? Ted Danson's same, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And there's a few of them, isn't there? Um, I think what, most yeah. um, older Hollywood fellas have got air implants, for it, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Why, though, blood, nowadays? I don't know. Well, if you can do it, I mean, would I, I, would I have a little air implant, maybe? No, no, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> I couldn't go through... Uh, I know some. I know somebody who had their hair tattooed. You know that tattoo line, mm. and it went blue. Right. That's definitely uh, 
and they'll go. Did I tell you my missus pulled one of my hairs out? We're in front. Of me. He was, I always wear a hat anyway, but she pulled an hair out from under my hat. I might have told you. And I went, she just pulled it out. I went, bing. And I went, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like gold dust there. Huh? Just go pulling him out. I think that's three like, strands. You know, you're yeah. a lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> pulling hand, I said, you're pulling handfuls of my hair out. <laughs> I don't have that problem. Um, in fairness, being bald never really, never bothered never bothered me at all. No, to be fair, I always had a shaved head for years. Yeah. Um, oh, Mrs. told me to leave it. She like she, she finds my uh, receding black Nicholson haircut quite sexy. Apparently, I don't so really just... need to hear that. <laughs> 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 it's I, I remember you shitting your own nappy. So, <laughs> oh, oh, she laughed at me yesterday. I um, I went in my shed right, and I've bought some overalls. <laughs> what, what sort of overalls? Just blue overalls, you know, so I can just put them over my clothes. Go in my shed. Right. I went in my shed till eleven o'clock last night. Painting. I, hang on a minute, right? When he puts his blue overalls on, you expect him is going down into like a a, a, a lift, and going down into, into pit. Right? <laughs> he walks six foot into a garden and into a shed. <laughs> yeah, it's a tiny little shed. Yeah. Um. But I came in and I was taking them off, so I didn't finish till eleven. And Lou was sat on the sofa, and I was taking. That's what my dad off. used to do. And I couldn't that's get them off. That's cause... what his dad used to do. Yeah, it's true. They were quite yeah, the boiler tight. suit on. Yeah, yeah, boiler suit. So I was taking it off, and she goes, "Fucking, it's like a Pepsi ad." <laughs> it's like what? A Pepsi ad. <laughs> I'm struggling <laughs> my fucking fat body out. Of me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said it's like a shit Pepsi ad. Where exactly? Yeah, it's like a Pepsi ad. Oh, no, what is Diet Coke? Time, ad, diet Coke. Yeah, Diet Coke. It's like a it's like a Diet Coke ad. With, this time, boiler suit. It's got a walk underneath it. <laughs> like, like a shit <laughs> shit Diet Coke ad. <laughs> Anyway, if you, are we going to talk about anything else other than fucking slagging you? No, just take piss out of you off, really, yeah. all night. There's no wrong with that, is there? Um, we, we, we released the first Huxley um, Brave New World Order. Um, yeah. Re- it went live as a video yesterday. Yeah. Um, I did a watch in a bit of it, actually. I never actually listened to our stuff back, but you rang me and said it was on live, and I'd forgotten. Mm. I was in my shed and I put it on. I I'm glad you take it. notice of what we do. <laughs> well, I put it on Instagram that we uh, were releasing it on the 5th as a thing. Um, yeah, you've but, got uh, three more people watching it. <laughs> <laughs> got, I think we've got 500 thing, people on uh, Instagram. Follow uh, Sheet Farm on Instagram, please. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I ended up watching a bit of it, about an hour of it. Wow. And I don't, I don't really like listening to myself talk, if I'm honest. Well, you don't like listening, listening to... You? Thick Yorkshire accent. You love the sound of your own voice, so you, you could listen to yourself all day. You've got it on. You've got yourself on your headphones <laughs> when you're just wandering around. <laughs> it's better than listening to you <laughs> slurping that down. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, um, it's been quite an interesting journey, hasn't it? I know it has for you. Mm. Uh, listening to stuff that I've pulled out. And yeah, no, I've enjoyed your new hooks. Yeah. I've enjoyed that hooks stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, it feels different. Like I keep saying, it feels different. It seems like something else we're doing. Yeah, and and that's I suppose what you've got to keep keep doing, keep moving the ball forward. I suppose. Well, that's, that's what, what we promised we when, when we started the membership thing. That's what we promised when it. Well, we promised ourselves yeah. that we'd make sure we got a show out every week and yeah. we'd do some background, uh, bigger stuff, which is like yeah. this, that's what it yeah. helps us to do. To be fair, yeah. In, in fairness, when I started the Huxley stuff, I never actually envisaged it. Um, I just thought it was going to be about Aldous Huxley. Two hours gone, boom. I don't yeah. think we've mentioned him yet. No, not really mentioned Aldous Huxley. And that's really what it were about. Somebody emailed me tonight, actually, from uh, Vicky from Clive de Carles. Hi, Vicky, if you're listening. Um, she said she liked the Huxley stuff. She's got that book that you had. Is it Revisited? Brave New World I've got Revisited? it right in front of me. Yeah, Brave New World Revisited. Yeah, I'm, I'm making yeah. my way through it with a, um, a highlighter pen for when we get right. near that. Because it's got some interesting stuff in it. Probably more interesting than the actual, not more interesting than the book, but it's him talking. So it's, it's that one effort. So it's right, yeah. it's right at you there. Right, um, right. But it's interesting. And, and uh, Vicky said, uh, I loved your Aldous Huxley part one. Uh, uh, have you read Brave New World Revisited? Obviously, you're reading it. I haven't finished reading it because he, Huxley, comes across as such a total eugenicist banging on about the yeah, overpopulation yeah, yeah. problem. Um, and this was published in 1959, she says. Um, yeah. yeah. Let me read uh, a paragraph out if you want, Faye. I've started yeah, go on, it, yeah. right? I've starred it, right, and I've got no idea what it says. <laughs> because yeah. I highlighted no, it right. for a reason. Yeah. But I'll just read it out, I'd hope why not. Mm. In the light of what we have recently learned about animal behaviour in general, 
So this is going to surprise me as much as I know because I can't remember what it was. Behaviour in general and human behaviour in particular. It has now become clear that control through the punishment of undesirable behaviour is less effective in the long run than control through the reinforcement of desirable, desirable behaviour by rewards. And that government through terror works on the whole less well than government through non-violent manipulation of the environment and of the thoughts and feelings of the individual men, women and children. Punishment temporarily puts a stop to the undesirable behaviour, but does not permanently reduce the victim's tendency to indulge in it. Moreover, the psychophysical byproducts of punishment may be just as undesirable as the behaviour for which an individual has been punished. Psychotherapy is largely concerned with the deliberate in or antisocial consequences of past punishments. Did any of that sink in? Well, I mean, it just sounds like what we lived through in... Uh, I don't know why I 20... like that. <laughs> because of that. Yeah. Um, it's just what we... Uh... Well, he's basically saying we need to bring in the brave new world, isn't it? Uh, mm. Or he's, 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 he's saying it needs to be a brave new world and not just by punishment. It needs to be desirable. Reinforcement of desirable behaviour by rewards. Yeah. So... A reward system rather than a punishment system, I think he's basically saying there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But Which what's, avoid, what's the award? I mean, is it an upside down? All his family were, uh, I am not saying all his family, the, especially Julian. I mean, they were all linked to sort of like biology and things like that. But they're all authors as well. Mm. And in the second one, we called it Twilight Language because I think a lot of the stuff that were being written was to plant all this stuff in his mind uh, and well, like spells, weren't it? Mm. And that was an interesting the, picture that that um, fella sent me. I forwarded it to you. I've forgotten his name now. Sorry, I've lost the blooming. And I don't know my email. He said there's an email of him in um, uh, dungarees uh, with the acid house smiley face on him. And right. I think he said that yeah. was from 1974. Who sent that fight? Have you got it in front of you? And he, no, he, I haven't got it in front of me, no. He said, he said it was from 1974. So right. they were they were plant. Well, it could have been just a, it might have been just a thing, you know, where they just put them, mm. that symbol that became famous on there. Or was it planting that egg for, what, 15 years later? Well, well I mean, these things are inserted into popular culture, aren't they? The smiley face. That was an interesting part of that that popped out that was quite obvious that when you look back and you see how much it was used in mm. even the Mr. Men for argument. We didn't mention the Mr. Men, but so, even the Mr. Men, yeah. uh, the, uh, emojis. the, the emojis, yeah. uh, the, I mean, the emoji were called the Grinning Man. And yeah. the Grinning also, Man. Also, someone, someone emailed us as well. Sorry, again, I, I should have written these things down. I just saw them in there. Uh, saying, was it the Sun God? Right. Which I mean, yeah. I never actually thought yeah. that. It literally is a giant yeah. sun, isn't it? It's the exact yeah. same colour. If you're going to cartoon yeah. a sun, so you've got sun worship right there. Yeah, I never. I can't believe we never thought of that. No, yeah. well, again, there's that much information. Um, people <clears throat> are emailing. People email stuff like, "Oh, Aldous Huxley's this and Aldous Huxley's that." But I mean, th these initial four aren't even about any of the Huxleys. Mm. They're just about the links back. It's, an, it's an interesting with. way to do it. Now we found it an interesting way to do it. I mean, because we could choose another subject in the future, and yeah. do a similar kind of thing, just a pathway yeah. through it. Yeah, you know, whether yeah, well, it's history of films, history of comics, history of book, um, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. principal books. Who knows? Yeah, and it, and what what it is is you, you you throw a pebble in the middle and you you follow the ripples where it it, it goes in the middle of the pond, and that that's all this is really following following the ripples. Yeah, I've been finishing off the fourth one um, about George Orwell and there's some really interesting stuff with George Orwell. I mean, stuff that I didn't really know who George Orwell was. Um, I've read most of his stuff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. To be fair, after reading 1984, kind of retracted backwards. I've read the Wig and Pierce stuff because it, yeah. it was all about like the working man and that kind of, you know, uh, ground level. Even though, like you said, he went to Eton <clears throat> So, and he wrote that book um, down and out in Paris and London, where he was basically a bum in Paris and London. Really good, yeah. really interesting for me because uh, <clears throat> as a chef, because you get, a, I think he works as a kitchen potter, you get an in, insight into, um, you know, what, what working in the kitchen was like and with sawdust floors and stuff, you know, yeah. no hygiene yeah. whatsoever. All right, well, we, we want to 
keep on with the uh, Huxley Brave New World order um, talk. We've got two more episodes that we've recorded. Um, Twilight Language and The Doors of Deception. And I know a few people have been emailing in or commenting in as well about, oh, you, you didn't mention this or you didn't mention that or is, did this happen or that. We're not going to cover everything in a, in a two and a half hour episode, sadly. As I mentioned at the beginning of that episode, this really was, um, I won't say a bonus, but it's the echoes of the Huxleys and the series, the four parts are about the peripheral stuff that we that I came across when I was doing the research. So we're not even talking about the Huxleys per se uh, as yet. So it's pointless even commenting on that until we've done that. But we're not going to get everything and uh, we're not going to capture all the information. But as long as we get a lot of the information, it'll build a big picture. And we can do other shows then for the bits we've missed out on. That, that's the, the whole idea. Um, but thanks for your emails as well and your, uh, your comments on there. Because we're going to go through a few few of them now. But the, the Doors of Perception is the one, Deception sorry, is the one that we've done uh, last. And that's just, I've just finished that off now. Um, and there's another one that we're, going to, that we're going to be doing. And I'm calling it Zeros and Ones. And that one's about other academic families that have got some weird links into the Huxleys, like Susan Mickey um, and um, Tim Berners-Lee and people like that. They're not directly linked to the Huxleys, but they, there is links there from the work that their parents did, etc. And also we're going to cover um, C.S. Lewis. We're going to come on a, to a comment about C.S. Lewis as well. We're going to go into a, a bit of detail, not loads of detail, but just some interesting stuff about him that you might not know about. And also... George Orwell. I'm going into a little bit more detail on George Orwell and his bloodlines, etc. As well. This is what I find quite interesting, the bloodlines. I don't know when I showed it Chris, where I get my information from. He was a bit blown away from it, wouldn't by it, wouldn't he, Chris? Mm, yeah, very interesting. Interesting. Uh, we could just basically put someone's name in and follow the follow the trail kind of. Which I've mm. never done. And it's there's a bit more to it than just that. Yeah, you can put somebody's name in. But some of them are locked. So you can't even get any further. Mm. So then where do you go from there? So there is other other stuff you've got to do as well. Um, but yeah, some I'm really, it's, it's the part that I'm really interested in is the geneolo genealogy. Mm. Um, that's the bit that I'm interested in. So one of the, uh, one, one comment that was sent in by Random Free Human or Trev. Uh, we met Trevor down at um, Rattree last time, Chris. Right. And Trev's on Master Lee's uh, Saturday shows live. Ah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I mean, don't you? Uh, real top top guy. Just listening to the second hour of Brave New World Order on your excellent, on your excellent bullshit platform. <laughs> <laughs> you, trait, you traitor, Trev. <laughs> uh, first line of I don't like mon Mondays. I'm going to say monkeys then. I don't like Mondays. The silicon chip inside her head is set to overload. I didn't know that, did you? Well, no. I don't know the heard that. I don't know the lyrics to it, to be fair. Oh, I did know the lyric, yeah. I did know <clears> that lyric, yeah. I just remember the um, the uh, chorus, really. I didn't, I, yeah, I don't really know the song that well. But bloody hell, if that's, that, is that in there? Yeah. What does that even mean? That is, yeah. I mean, well, it, again. In early 80s on, as well. In early 80s, yeah. where it was that Late song. 70s, like, early Late 80s. 70s, early 80s. <clears throat> what was he talking about then? Yeah. Chips didn't uh, even exist. <laughs> like, did the they? silicon chip inside her head. Is, is set to overload. Mm. Mm. Interesting that um, two of his close family have overloaded, um, and he was brainwashing people in 1984 stroke 85 mm. with yeah. information uh, that overloaded people. It, can, can you remember that information that were put out there? In I remember it as a kid at Christmas where they had all them poor African kids queuing up and there were film crews there just... Filming them while they were basically dying of starvation. Yeah. What, queuing up for food, you mean? Yeah. Freaked me out. Freaked me out. Yeah. It was, it was just another um, horrible thing to throw out. Another terror mm. instance, really, wasn't it? Another traumatic yeah. instance for everybody. I mean, was that even happening over there? We don't know, do we? We don't really know. Um, don't know what we're happening. I, we? I know I've, I've spoke to numerous African people. I mean, it's a big continent, obviously. Who, one of one of my mates, why do they always just show like starving Africans? We're not all starving. It's a bit of yeah. an insult, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. For a country yeah. that big, just uh, we, we, we grew up with that association. 
that they yeah. had flies in their eyes and on the and bloody massive bellies and starving to death. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they produced too many children and yeah. every, everything. I, I remember hearing grown ups talking that, well, they need, need to have less kids. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah we've so all that heard that. Seed, that eugenic seed in your mind. Yeah. And not you know, those, I, those, those bastards over there. Yeah, it's their <laughs> fault. Yeah, yeah, it's their fault. Everything's um, their fault. It's Asia or Africa, isn't it? Yeah. Um, they have too many kids. That's what mm-hmm. they say. I've heard it said th- thousands of times. Um, well, fortunately, I'm not one of them that say that. But um, a- Asians and Africans have too many kids. Um, Muslims want to kill you because <laughs> they hate your way of life. That's yeah. what we've been programmed with. Yes, yeah, and you know, and that's where these things come from. They come from that silicon chip inside her head that switched to overload mm. that was pressed on 2020 March, whatever it was, 23rd 2020, mm. um, th- and that overloaded everybody and. When you look at lyrics like that, and you look at what's actually happening with Elon Musk and and what have you, uh, and his Neuralink and his Starlink, I mean, I mean that's quite a line to come out of in that period of time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um, interesting about G- Geldof's daughter becoming a Scientologist. I um, mean, I didn't know that. You you said you mentioned mm. that, didn't you? Um, he said, he, he, Trev said, I was knocking about with Vivian Kubrick. Uh, it was in a band with her called uh, Dingo Babies around the time of Full Metal Jacket. She had that drill instructor song in the charts at the time. She also went off and joined the Scientologists. She was making a lot of noise in the truth aside at one time, yet still advocate, advocating Scientology. I met, met Stanley several times. Odd bloke, very paranoid with obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's interesting, isn't it, that us average Joes um, do come across, but, you know, that we do meet people who are attached to famous people or within the family units. Mm. Um, and they're also attached and very paranoid and uh, still stuck in that groove, aren't they? Mm. Is, is Vivian Kubik his daughter? I presume so. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I know his he's, his missus lives over near one of my mates, and she has an open garden fair every year. Yeah, and all the town go to it, kind of thing. Right, right. Very still interesting again, character. Isn't it? Uh, okay. Yeah, very interesting character. I think some of these people, yeah, we can all say, um, and we'll come on to some of these comments. Are all these people controlled? I don't believe so. Right, that's my view. I think the law of averages says they won't all be controlled. Are some of the are they attempted to be controlled? Yes. Is the information they're putting out a message? Yes. But some of them are probably think they're doing it for a benevolent reason, just like some of these lunatics that were handing out the arm spears like confetti. They thought they were helping people. And they don't realise that they're being used. That's the whole point of manipulation, isn't it? Not knowing they're being used. Mm. Uh, Kubrick could have thought he was doing something for the greater good of humanity. Just Until he found out. <laughs> we just don't know. You just don't know. Yeah. What, what we do know... One thing I do know is he I, made good films. Yeah, he was. He st- stood out there, didn't he? But w- one thing I do know is that the research, like what we're doing with this Brave New World Order, is showing the zeros and ones. It doesn't mean to say that C.S. Lewis was an evil bastard, yeah? Mm. Um, but he's connected to all this that's going on. He wrote books that became famous that were put into the minds of children. That can't be allowed to grow intelligence in the right way. Yeah. So there has to be some control in hand, as we spoke about with uh, Sherry in uh, the first part of this episode. Mm. Um, these things have... Yeah, some things escape. It's not a paranoid thing, this. I don't think... It's not scary. It's a, It's more an observation. Mm. It's interesting as well, the <clears throat> comment on the Scientology. Everyone goes on about the Scientology thing. I've actually got the book there, Dianetics, by L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. And I, I, I bought it, well, I got it from someone in the street years ago and signed up, you know, when you <laughs> I didn't realise, I didn't know what Scientology was. And uh, I don't right. think the book even mentions Scientology. I think the, the Scientology was based on that book. But when right. you read some of it, a lot of it just makes sense now because it's about, you know, trauma embedded in you. Um, that can be brought out by hypnosis and stuff. And I remember reading in it, uh, years ago I read it, but uh, about, you know, if you're an alcoholic or a drug addict, 
um, using saunas and sweating it, getting every molecule out, because until you get every molecule of the drug out, you still got an addiction, mm. etc. So a lot yeah. of it made a lot of sense to me. And I think a yeah. lot of it's probably matter of fact now. So it's funny how it it was used, or I don't know, was it invented to drag people is in? It the, and turn it is it revolution a method? Is that the, Turn it into that psycho cult that it became, you know? Yeah. Yeah, to make everybody look nuts if they go in a sauna to get every molecule out. Well, that's another way of looking at it, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So I'm nuts then. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe um, just got hijacked and just became a financial thing like most religions do. Yeah. It's strange, isn't it, though, that however nuts they say these Scientologists are, Tom Cruise is still worth whatever $600 million and makes blockbuster films that, again, by Hollywood that are funded by all these dark cultists. So... He's a Scientologist, but he's still working for the man. I mean, I've just picked this book up now, and it's um, The Power of the Mind Over the Body. Dianetics reveals a single source of pain, unhappiness, self-doubt in your life, reactive mind. But when when I I, I gave him my name and address when I bought this book off someone, I forget where it was now. I think it was some... C- you, you like doing that, don't you? Well, they kept ringing me fire. Uh, I didn't even know what Scientology was. We're going back 20 years here. And they were ringing me all the time. Do you want to come to this fen- yeah. convention? Do you want to come to this? And I'm like, no, I don't. What are you talking about? And I, I, uh, yeah, going back years here, and I didn't know where it was. Uh, but wasn't Hubbard uh, involved with JPL, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and That's he right. worked for uh, American uh, and, uh, in the military. I think, I think he was rubbing shoulders with Aldo. Is it Crowley as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, I know when we did the uh, Werner von Braun uh, live, yeah, we were actually going to we were actually going to do the opposite, weren't we? Jet Propulsion Labs mm. as well. Which uh, when I finish this Brave New World, I think it's where I'm going to be heading into that, and that'll space. cover that Scientology side. Yeah, Head into space, That'd be, yeah, the space. new frontier, yeah. yeah, um, or the wet frontier, whichever we want to call it. Um, so some, someone else uh, mentioned here. Uh, I, I mentioned Trev because I know Trev. Uh, Trev's a very knowledgeable guy. He's a musician, he's isn't he? Really good to yeah. listen to it. Yeah, yeah. He's a very knowledgeable guy. Um, somebody else put a comment. These are all comments from YouTube, by the way. They're not emails. Uh, so they're out there to look at if people want to look at them. And to put a comment in on so stand in the park, use the smiley face. And she actually, I think she put a, a sad face at the side of it or whatever it was. And I, I, my notes here underneath this is I want to point out that when we normal folk use the smiley face, and I presume that the stand in the park guys are all normal folk we're probably using it with the right intentions or the right we, we think we're using it for the intended purpose um, yeah which is to cheer people up um so it's, it's like the number numerology stuff in it just because you use 666 or 33 yeah. don't mean to say you, you, you're satan worshiper yeah um yeah, I would agree. Uh, them numbers are there for everybody to use they just use them it's, for, it's, i mean that smiley face for someone's a sigil for us it's not yeah. Maybe. It might not even, but we might be just have it all rot, rot. Yeah. There's too many of them, though, isn't there? Yeah. There's too many of them. Um, but it, it, I, we, what we're doing here, we're putting stuff out in there that says th- this is possibly being used against us um, as some kind of weapon. That doesn't mean to say everything we put in that podcast or that uh, podgumentary, whatever you want to call it, is, <laughs> is, 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 own, yeah, is, is it 100% accurate either. You know, it's accurate to what we can see. Um, everything that we're talking about might be absolute nonsense and it might be something totally different. And we enter a totally different di- dimension. Yeah. Um, and that's a big conversation. Yeah, everything's up for. Even the stuff that we find out is up for grabs as far as I'm concerned mm. and correction and et cetera, et cetera. So we've got to be very careful to say that's an exact truth. No. You know? Uh, think, yeah. You, yeah. You can say that about anything, can you? What, what I would say about the smiley face, it's used that much in different things like emojis and things like that, mm. that there has to, as, as we've seen, there has to be something behind it all for it to be and allowed to get to that size. The Nirvana one's the one that spooks me out of it. The, the yeah, Nirvana connection, out, yeah. the, the Watchman connection. Yeah, the dent in his head yeah. on the Nirvana one. Yeah. Totally it's angry. dead, that, that, that's dead, isn't it's it? A, d- a dead version of the smiley face. Yeah. And he shot himself, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. He did. And so... Um, yeah, somebody else put a, a good comment on, uh, totally different, but it was on there, um, but we'll, we'll discuss it. On our street of only 17 houses, no less than six people have died after receiving the three dart finish. And curiously, none had proper funerals. They were all they were all oven-ready turkeys, to my mind. 
But it's still deeply shocking, and I sympathise greatly with their relatives. And, yeah, that's an odd state of affairs. That, what does that he mean he like, didn't, didn't have proper funerals? I, I, I don't know what he means. That's, it might mean they were rushed or they were old people. Well, they weren't. Well, they, I mean, had Dad died in the middle of the thing, and he didn't have yeah. a proper funeral. Mm. Um, which, again, is Brave New World fight, where they just mm. incinerate them and no one really, there's no history of them, no one really knows where they've gone or... That's no. really what they're doing, aren't they? They're wiping out people's legacy and their, their yes. existence. Um, yeah. Just vaporised, gone. Yeah. Bastards. Turn them to ash. Yeah. Are you click tapping something there? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, 3,000 excess deaths a week, Chris, in the UK. Is When's that? Is that... Is that um, Oh, well, he put that hours, on. So he says six, six hours, hours ago, ago, but I put this on about six hours ago. So let's just say it's twelve oh, hours ago. Is it? Is it, be, is it because I was saying? Um, I know January and February. I'm not sure about March. Yeah. So that was from probably from the podcast we did on Sunday. That uh, off uh, yeah. spec on yes, spec podcast. Right. Yeah, because I think I mentioned um, that I weren't sure of the figures at the moment. So he's he equated not, that to ten Lockerbies. Bloody hell! Yeah. Or a twin tower. I mean, puts it in week. context, that. Yeah, yeah or yeah. a twin tower uh, every week. But it's not discussed at all. No. And, and if you think about that, every four months, five months, every every let's just say six months, every six months in the UK, it's like uh, the death toll of the US in Vietnam. Yeah. Extra. 30,000 a year. Yeah. Um, 36,000 a year. How, how are they managing to sweep these in the carpet? I know it's something totally different. We're not talking, but we are talking about the Huxley's because this is Brave New World, isn't it? Well, it's everything. This is yeah, 1984. Yeah. This is every dystopian thing you can think of. People disappear. Yeah. Can, can well, you remember in the 70s with Argentina and the Junta, where people they had all them pictures on the wall of people that had disappeared? What had been disappeared by the government? Yeah. Yeah. Similar thing, isn't it? Yeah. Except they don't get a picture. <laughs> Except they don't get a picture. Uh, I mean, I told you a story. I'm going to tell this story. Uh, a guy went in clinic telling me a story um, this week. Uh, he said his mate's a truck driver. We're driving down the road. Saw his mate stood on the wall. He must have been building a wall. Bibbed his horn, waved at him. And as he was driving past him, his mate collapsed and fell off the wall. So he stopped his truck to see if we were all right. And he was dead. 51-year-old. What the hell? When did you ever hear a story like that? Never. Um, what were the other... Uh, uh, one of the fa local farmers who were know around here, uh, they do a lot of turfing, and one of the guys who drives their turfing truck to, to get the turf off the off the field, yeah. they found him slumped over his uh, steer, over steering wheel at the truck. 53. I mean, it happens, but you've had that two stories in a week. Yeah. I had two stories yesterday <clears throat> that happened in a week. And I remember right at the beginning of them um, dishing out the uh, jibber jabs. Uh, I have a guy comes around and he sells fish out of a van, frozen fish. He won at first people, Chris, I remember. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah that we, we, he just started we, it and he came around and uh, he said, you've got loads of work on because one of his colleagues had just dropped dead at his steering wheel. And I asked how old he was. I think he was in his 40s. Yeah. Weird, isn't it? It is weird. Reminds me of that program that um, I forget what we're, we're in it now. Where all in people, it was, a re it was a series a few years ago. I don't know if they did a second one, where loads of people just I think they just keeled over or they disappeared. It's been in a lot I of, a lot of stuff. That. A lot of, that that yeah. imagery, that kind of thing, where a lot of people disappear. Because you mentioned the other day, snap your fingers and they're gone. And it, remember, I, yeah. I, I can't believe we never thought of that before. But in the Marvel. Um, we might have mentioned it before. I might have mentioned it before. I can't remember. But in the Marvel yeah. Universe, the last two films with Thanos, and he literally yeah. snaps his fingers and half the universe vanishes. And he's doing it for the good of the universe, apparently. So he's a eugenicist. Apparently, yeah. yeah. He's a eugenicist. Eugenicist. Um, could, could be related to... He, uh, he, he half sympathises with him, though. Al Gore. Yeah. <laughs> what sees boiling and... Uh, Yes, he's boiling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why why didn't anybody listening to him at that uh, VillainCon World Economic Forum um, this year? And he sat there saying the seas are boiling. 
Why didn't they say go, Al? Where? Al. Where Al? Al. <laughs> yeah. They're not fucking boiling, all right. Calm down, uh, Al. Sit down. Your documentary was but, shite. None of it's come true. Sit down. Yeah. Have a cookie yeah. and a glass of milk. <laughs> yeah. The seas are boiling. Yeah. I mean... How do you get away with just saying stuff like that? I don't know. Like like old uh, Greta Humberg. Yeah. People are dying. Where? What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. You lunatic. Yeah. Just mad people can just get up there and say what they want. And then it's a, it's a scientific yeah. fact. <laughs> people with brain damage can go up and say what they want. People who are psychopaths can go yeah. up and say the seas are boiling. Yeah. Nobody says anything. Nobody yeah. dare say anything. I saw I saw a video today, or somebody sent me a video. Um, it's a commander in the uh, American Army who's obviously trans. So what they've got is they've got a commander now in the American Army. I'll try and find it. I might play it. Um, <laughs> and who. I know you'll you'll only be able to hear this, uh, everybody. But um, a, a, a commander in the American Army who um, who's a trans now, and this person is running an army. You've got someone who's going through the train dressed as a woman, who's at the height of um, the military the strongest military apparently in the world, and they've now got a transgender who we used to see in Benidorm. You know what I mean? In a strip club in Benidorm. Now running part of the military in America. Why not? Might as well. This is this is how they're degrading <laughs> um, uh, people. Just I'll, I'll just play this. I know it's something totally different, but this is part of the Brave New World Order, whether we like it or not. Happy Transgender Day of Visibility. I am Admiral Rachel Levine, the <laughs> Assistant Secretary for Health at the Department of Health and Human Services. For the second year in a row, the transgender flag is flying above our department in Washington, D.C. And this is an affirmation of the administration's support for the transgender community and across the nation, as well as our support for evidence-based gender-affirming care. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. No, I don't either. That, that's an, an admiral. It's an admiral. <laughs> Can you imagine you're, you're at Second World War? Who are we going to send? We're going to send Admiral Rachel Bob, uh, whatever, uh, to uh, to war with uh, Admiral Bismarck or whatever. I mean, who's your betting on who wins? Is that a man turning into a woman? Yes. He wears a skirt. He goes and meets president in a skirt. With women's shoes on. You don't even know what to say, do you? It's just... Um, I, I, <laughs> carry on as normal. This isn't existing. It's not happening in front of your eyes at all. Yeah. Um, I know that would have quite a, um, a trip out somewhere else, but... Um, no, but again, yeah. no, one's, no one cares. But, but it's just it's just so obviously... And otherwise, it would have gone on forever. It's just... And it's not about being patient with... Minorities, cause, but no, cause yeah. no one cares. No. What is it? What Scary, about, isn't it? it? What is it about? Yeah. yeah. I, I, well, it's a destruction, isn't it? They're, they're breaking down the fabric. They're now putting people, again, like Master Lee once said, you know, we've been run by the weaker side of humanity for some reason. I don't mean weaker as in physically weaker, mentally weaker as well. Um, I mean, the suicide rates in trans people. Um, mm. I think Ed mentioned it in one of his. So it's like a, it's like a war zone. Mm. The attrition rate for suicides in trans people is huge, mm. which says there is some kind of whether we like to say it or not, mental illness. Mm. I'm not saying think. I'm not saying if you're born with women's parts and you think you're a man, it's all mental illness. But there is some part of it that has given you. It's, it's a bit like saying if a if a poor child's got autism. That there isn't something wrong with them. Mm. Well, the, 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 as well for it, it, it's always existed. But what they've done with with the psyop that they're creating, they've pushed people who probably wouldn't go in that direction. Mm. So then they have become mm. miserable. Um, I mean, because it's always existed, but they've, they've they've trendified it, and they've got people doing it who probably wouldn't have done it before. They, they yeah. might, you know, they might have gone in another direction. Yeah. Hence why um, that that bloody Tabascop thing got shut down. Yeah. But, well, who is it, Mister Draper? Um, got too obvious, didn't it? Who is its uh, uh, what they call a, a newsreader's husband? Yeah. Uh, he, he was a, in Tavistock. He was a psychologist in Tavistock. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, 
Somebody put on here, did you know that Jim Morrison's dad kicked off the Vietnam War? There's also some interesting connections to be found in a book called Weird Scenes Inside the Canyon by a chap called Dave McGowan. Um, we definitely he, mentioned that. We may, uh, well, I mentioned that quite a lot. I mean, Dave McGowan is um, one of the people I mentioned earlier that Richard Diol was one of the people we we, we, we look at. Um, and Dave McGowan's definitely one of them people. Yeah. It, his work stands out. Uh, it's totally different to anybody else's work. Yeah. And not just that book either. No, I've got three um, of his books. Um, yeah. Understanding the F Word is one of them. Mm. Program to Kill is the other one, and then Weird Scenes Inside the Canyon. Well, I mean, yeah. you might you might not have heard you mention it. You do drift off sometimes when you listen to stuff You do, like that. when you listen to us, we, yeah. We've mentioned Dave McGowan loads of times. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, one thing I will say, we're, we're doing, uh, we, I mentioned earlier, just a, a few minutes ago, that uh, the third uh, Brave New World Order is going to be uh, the Doors of Deception, where we're going to go into a Jim Morrison and his uh, bloodlines and um, Rayman Zarek as well. And it's, we found found some d interesting information that, about these guys. And also, um, I think I mentioned in the first part of uh, Brave New World Order that McGowan and Mark Devlin and people like that, they've set the scene and now it's up to other people, say like us or whoever, to go that step, pick the ball up and take it that next step. And then somebody else behind us will do the, th do the same thing, hopefully, and take it to another place. Yeah. Um, and that's what this veil, is all it? about. Yeah, of course it is. It's all, all lifting the veil. Um, but Dave McGowan certainly set the precedence of that type of research. There's no yeah. doubt about that, in my opinion, anyway. You were groundbreaking in that way. I was um, listening to all his uh, podcasts quite feverishly, I think, when he actually passed away. Yeah, yeah. I know you sent them to me. I will listen to them as well. What, what would uh, he have done in the uh, previous nonsense? You know, what would he have been producing? You can't imagine. No. And it does make you wonder why these people went. Do you remember that other guy, uh, Michael Rupert? He vanished Michael Rupert, just, yeah. Yeah, he vanished just before. You just think yeah. these like powerhouses that were already up to the knees in it, Yeah. What, what they'd have been shouting from the rafters. I remember Michael Rupert's uh, book, uh, Crossing the Rubicon. Yeah, the, you gave that, me the DVD. That's where I found yeah. it. Yeah, what a book that was. Um, he, suicide, he, he committed suicide. Well, he he had uh, Big C as well, like uh, McGowan. Did he? He went a bit gaga, I think, as well. He's obviously, he was an ex-policeman, wasn't he? I think somebody... Yeah. Had, uh, I think a lot... He, they get a lot of this information, and it, it does... It is a parasite inside you. I mean, we're talking about that with uh, Sherry, where these things do take over you if you allow them to. Mm. They do. There's no doubt about that. Um, and another another comment on this, these are all on YouTube, as I said. Um, I'd always thought C.S. Lewis, who we mentioned briefly in that one, was a devout Christian. He wrote a lot on the subject. Surely, just because he dies on the same day as Huxley, doesn't make him a bad guy. Um, just like we said a few um, ten minutes ago, so that not we don't, we're not saying anybody's a bad guy. Um, a lot of these people could be used, utilized. I mean. Operation Mockingbird, um, they only had one or two, say, newsreaders that were doing that across a network. But what they were doing was steering all the other newsreaders. Mm. And some people didn't even know they were in Operation Mockingbird um, until years later. They didn't realise that. It makes that, sense, though, doesn't it? Because it makes it more natural. Yeah, it makes it more natural. Obviously, these are intelligence services that are operating. And they're not going to tell you the truth, either. That's the whole point of them. Mm. And so C.S. Lewis and his books, Narnia and God, who knows what um, that's pumping out into in, to kids. Um, just like Monsters Inc. We talked about Monsters Inc. with Sherry. You know, you look. I look at that totally differently now to what I did in the early two thousands when I took my eldest to watch it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, in forgetting what subliminal stuffs in there. You know, you mm. might, I mean, the, the, some of these books and stuff that they release, like C.S. Lewis, but it might just be a tiny little. Might be one line. Yeah, it might be just one a small piece of it just to interject it into a kid's head. Yeah. It might be written in that what was that code? Not like Twilight, a bit like Twilight language, but the code can you remember the Beatles book, the guy um Billy Shear's book. Yeah. He wrote said he wrote that in several codes, didn't he? Yeah. Um and you don't know what you're reading, do you? No, you I mean and then like to. we've mentioned Alice in Wonderland, I mean that's probably loaded, didn't it? And Wizard of mm. Oz loaded with yeah. symbology and messages that we'll probably never yeah. understand. What was that uh, book that all them uh, people, like Saran Saran or, uh, would it Catcher in the Rye? Uh, yeah. 
yeah. that, that they used. I mean, it's meant to be a Masonic I, book, apparently. Right. But it's quite an obs- I mean, I've never read it. It's not a. a, it's, like not a, a it's not meant to be that good. I don't think. It's not a mainstream type book, is it? You know, um, yeah. it's only famous probably because of them. Well, it's, it's maybe one of them that's famous for the sake of being famous for. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And was it was it written for for that particular reason? And even the author didn't know that. It, if I run a scenario. If C.S. Lewis has got an agent, and he says, "This is this this part of um, uh, whatever books." Is not covered um, this type of uh, writing. I think that would be what you'd be good at. And it's a well, bit like I'll use Bob Marley as a good example. He was a soul singer, and then Island Records turned him into a reggae singer. I didn't know that. Is that true? Well, apparently, yeah. Whether it's, whether it's tra- re- he wanted to be a soul singer. I um, to be, right. um, um, well, another, um, another example, an even simpler. I think example, that is. Somebody simpler, will correct a, me, no doubt. A simpler example of that is fine. I'm making a film, right, or a TV series, and I want funding mm. to make that film to go ahead with it. Yes. Now, would I yeah. easier get funding and money to go towards it if I had a trans person in it? I'm guessing I would. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, or if you talked about climate change, or climate if you talked about or, yeah. COVID or some yeah. other nonsense. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's, oh, it's, it's a massive ethnic minority cast as well these days, yeah. for whatever yeah. reason, you know. All these things. I mean, me and my missus joke about stuff like that. You know, you might you get the job if you were disabled and black or whatever. You know, I mean, they know it's an old trait, but then the tran- the um, transsexual thing came into it, didn't it? Yeah. Um, just threw it all on its head because they get more mm. attention than any minority, even though they're a minority of a minority of a minority. Yeah. But, I mean, we're not saying, again, that C.S. Lewis is an evil guy. He was definitely a dark occultist, though. Mm. And he definitely went to Malvern College, where Alistair Crowley went. Um. That doesn't mean to say he, he wasn't there when Alistair Crowley were there, I don't believe. But that doesn't mean to say that it's strange how we looked into Malvern College and Chris Whitty went there. All them generals that fought in World War One and what have you. Um, that doesn't mean to say they're all part of that uh, world. But mm. some of them are. Some of them are. That's it. Mm. Some of them are. And they might not even know it, but they and are. I don't, I don't think C.S. Lewis... Proclaiming as a devout Christian means sod all, because so is Tony Blair. Mm. 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 So d- t- announcing what religion you are, I don't think really cuts as no. good as we mean, to be fair. No, no, it, it doesn't make any difference, does it? But like you said and, earlier, we don't know, do we? We don't know. Mm. We're just pointing out inconsistencies. That's what I wrote here. Um, and the inconsistencies are, like, my, like Dave McGowan pointed out, all these people had military backgrounds. Mm. Don't we find that a bit odd? Um, just like all the Prime Ministers have, like we did with Margaret Thatcher, like we showed in that one with Margaret Thatcher, all the Huxleys that all these people is that go back to. I mean, somebody else pointed out another thing, which I actually saw on one of Mike Williams' the other day, that the Beatles wrote um, one of their albums, on, sorry, the Beatles released an album on the same day as well, all from right. the 2nd of the 11th. So it means something to someone somewhere. Yeah. I would, I would guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, one, one interesting one from Lorraine's husband. Um, he said, thanks for the Huxley uh, presentation. The na- name Gottlieb, or Gottlieb, as somebody uh, corrected, us, uh, corrected me, stuck out. And in case you have been a bit too busy, Scott Gottlieb, uh, born 1972, was is the 23rd commissioner of the FDA from 2017 to 2019. And he's now part of Pfizer, that revolving door. Right. Now, yeah. I did a quick scan, but I couldn't find any connection to Gottlieb, this one, and Cindy Gottlieb, the CIA torturer, uh, geezer. It's quite an unusual name, though, isn't it? To have, uh, yeah. It around. Would it surprise you? No. Wouldn't surprise me either. None of it surprises me anymore. Um, um, Oh yeah, somebody else put here just a quick note to say that Malvern College alumni include Alyssa Crowley, uh, Chris Whitty, Jeremy Paxman, and C.S. Lewis. Yeah, well, we went through that, but that was quite a long time ago as well, wasn't it? Yeah, we did. We mentioned that in the Chris Chris Whitty um, one, um, and that's again, are all these people linked to that? No, there's no doubt about that. 99.99% of the people that went to Malvern College came out of there normal. Mm. Whatever that means nowadays. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, anyway. 
Another one is, can you send a link about the Crow Triple Seven thing about Dorothy's red shoes and Jack Ruber? This is a new angle for me, chaps. Um, I don't know which show it was, to be honest with you. There's been quite a few. Look up the Michael Hoffman uh, podcast on Crow Triple Seven. I don't know what numbers they are, mate. Too busy to send links. Look through it for you, sadly. Um, you'll have to do a bit of homework. All we can do is... Sh- I know it's in the uh, King Kill 33, if you want to list- read that. I think, you can- right. I think there's a bit of a manuscript online you can read. I don't know how accurate that is. According to Crow, it's not accurate. You've got to buy it from Michael Hoffman, um, from his, uh, um, his, his, his website. Uh, yeah. Um, he says uh, the popes wear red shoes to signify all the bloody martyrs that they continue to tread on. Mm. In their theory that they wear uh, made of human skin, that's from my red spot. Right, right. right. Uh, what, one question here is: uh, How many years before COVID did they start defib talk? Many years. That alone shows it was well planned. Do you know? I, 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 we've we've often, I mean we've spoke about it a lot, but um, I look back to um, around about the time, whatever date that was, when I think we called. I forget the name of the guy. When it, uh, anyway, forget the footballer who played for Bolton. Um, when he collapsed on the pitch against Tottenham, I remember it. Uh, it right. was probably around about twenty fifteen. Right, Is that when he started. And that's when he were live on Saturday night on TV. Right. Yeah. And and that's when they started talking about having defibs. That's from my memory. I'm not saying it weren't before that, yeah. but that's from from when I can remember them saying um, about defibs. Right. And it might be before that or after that 2015, but it was around that sort of mid 20 teens. Well, by the time it got round to 2020, they were suddenly everywhere, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. And it was a um, discussion point where it hadn't been before. Yeah. And and also, they bring these things in like that, a bit like the smiley face on pyjamas in 1972. Um, because when it's normalised, you just think it's normal. Mm. That the discussion was already being had. So they're already filling newspapers and stuff like that with sepsis and shit like that, um, pre all this stuff, because they can then say, well, it were happening before. And well, the I, read an names. I read an article too yesterday. Um, 23 year old woman died of sepsis. I mean, when did you hear about that before? That is blood poison, isn't it? And it yeah. You didn't, you didn't hear things like that. She yeah. had a cold and then she died of, sep- ended up dying of sepsis. Do, do you did, know did what, Chris? Before? I don't know. Do you know what? If death rates were just normal, you wouldn't even question it, would you? We wouldn't, we wouldn't need to have this conversation. No, but they're not. The, the, They've been as high, I think, as five or six thousand a week, um, above the normal um, death rates. And and I mentioned on another one, I think the de- the the if it, I think Ed said in New Zealand it's eighteen percent, and if it's six six percent was the plague that they worked out yeah. or the Black Death or whatever they want to call it. So it's ten. It's over ten percent higher. Than what we think the worst ever plague was. But if it's not on TV, it's not happening, is it? No, no. And it ain't on TV. And it ain't on TV. And uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, we're living in an in- very interesting times. Sad mm. times, but interesting times. Mm. Um, interesting. Uh, again, if you if you look at it from a positive perspective. We're sort of fortunate to be here at this particular time in history. Mm. Well, without sounding pessimistic, we are all going to croak one day. Yeah. You know? Mr. Happy here. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm as happy as anyone, but uh, it's yeah. a fact, isn't it? And uh, that's what they play on your fears with. You might croak a little bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking to a guy whose dad passed away last two weeks ago we were in his 90s so we were were knocking on but he had pneumonia and doctors said we think he died of COVID not of being in his 90s no Um, or pneumonia Mm. or the fact that he had every tap under the sun yeah people aren't going to live forever but um, 
people are get, there's no doubt that people are getting knocked off for early. Hence why death rates are 3,000 a week above. Well, that's 12,000 people a month, Chris. Mm. What did I Every say? Every month. I'm, I'm an idiot. I said it was 33,000 a year. It's bloody much more than that, isn't it? Yeah. 12,000. Mm. I mean, they're, they're, them figures are, are insane, aren't they? Absolutely. Right, well, we'll wrap it up there. Um, we've got not not much else to talk about. Um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, chat we did with, with Sherry. There's a few more chats with uh, other people that we're going to be lining up soon um, over the next few weeks. And then we'll start releasing slowly. We've got another one of these Brave New World Orders to record and finish off. And that'll be it for that series. And uh, I'll try and release one or two of these over the next couple of months. Um, I mean, Mike, which, which is, I mean, you haven't seen the fourth one yet, but out of the three, which has been your your favourite, Chris? Um, I don't know. If I, I don't mind. I like all of them. Uh, I like the Watchmen stuff at the beginning, obviously, and mm. I, like, I like the Doors stuff, even though I've got no interest in the Doors either. No, I have no interest in the Doors, yeah. But I found that yeah. interesting. Yeah. It was clearly more yeah. shenanigans, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, clearly. Clearly more. And, uh, yeah, very interesting. All right, then. Well, thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time. Take it easy. Bye. Take care. Bye. Sky.